Planning to appear for UPSC CSE, but confused about where to start? Look no further. Vision IS Delhi presents the GS Foundation course 2025, 2026, and 2027. Avail centralized access to learning with classroom and online resources. Study material that is expert researched and thoroughly analyzed bases the UPSC exam pattern. Personal and individualized guidance every step of the way to cater to your technical and specific needs. Explore the holistic learning modules we have designed for the UPSC CSE aspirant. Batch starts 20th December 5 p.m. and 17th November 9 a.m. Offline come live online classes. With the right ingredients, success is yours to have. Enroll today in the Vision ISGS Foundation course 2025, 2026, and 2027. Okay, how many of you attended the history uh, analysis? Okay. All right. Okay. How many of you are currently enrolled with some program of Vision IS? Test series? Classroom? Okay. Regular classes. Okay, fine. So, uh, do you discuss previous year questions in the classes? Sometimes. Not really. <laughs> okay. All right. So today we are gathered here to discuss uh, the seven years past year papers of the environment section in the UPSC prelims examination. Now environment is a section that has gained a lot of importance, especially after the merging of forest service examination prelims with the civil services examination. Earlier that was not the case. After merging, especially it was observed after merging of the two papers that a lot of questions were asked from, uh, let's say, forest, biodiversity, the current acts, because uh, all these things are what 
a forest officer is expected to know and understand okay so well fortunately or unfortunately now environment is one of the important sections almost 20 to 25 questions out of 100 which is like 20 to 25 percent of the paper has questions related to environment section okay now let's start so just before i start which step are you all on today yes i did it <laughs> you've already done it then you should be here <laughs> What is the morale of the class today like? How do I do it? Okay. Anyone else? Anyone who is here? I will do it. This is where you all should strive to be. Whether you are from here to air, a little bit of dash of luck is also required. Okay. That is the will of God. But here, up till here, all these steps are absolutely within your hands. This is absolutely something that you can decide based on your willpower. Finally, selection, kab hota hai, kaise hota hai, is something that, uh, you know, destiny has a plan for that. But this, till this step, no one can stop you. Okay? So today's class momentum has to be here. I will do it. Okay? Have the faith in yourself because that is the single most important ingredient to get success in anything in life, anything. Okay? Chalo, let's start. So like you all see, and I have told you also, environment section has, over the years, had increasing importance and a lot of importance. In fact, sometimes we categorize environment questions into current affairs also because questions from the news which are related to environment get categorized as current affairs. But environment plus static plus current affairs forms a major, major part of this paper, 20 to 25 percent. And what is the kind of questions you have to, you know, what is the number of questions you have to clear in order to pass the prelims paper? How many you should know? What is the cutoff like these days? 80, 90. 90 is a safe number. That means around 45 correct questions. Okay. So out of 45, if 20, 25, of course, you can't know all the questions, but even if you know, let's say 20, 15 to 20, your half of the work is done. And then, of course, there are easy questions in polity, there are easy questions in economics, okay, there are questions in history. So environment forms one of the major parts of this paper. Let's take a look at the environment section of this year. Which, which uh, subject do you see has the major share? Current affairs is this. It's 15 percent roughly. And this is environment. Okay? And mind you, current affairs section also has some questions related to environment. So that is a major share. Okay, now let's start. Let's start analyzing the environment section. See, environment may there are four or five broad themes under which UPSC asks questions. Okay, four, five broad subjects, sub parts of particular uh, environment. Okay, now for example, most of the questions, a majority of the questions are related to the biodiversity section. Majority, it is, it is rarely impossible that biodiversity will not have a major uh, share in this paper. It's very rare. Biodiversity has to come. Okay, biodiversity is one of the major components within environment, but within biodiversity, two kinds of questions have been observed. One is related to the taxonomy. That means, what is taxonomy? That means, when you classify plants, animals, when you classify the living organisms into particular, let's say, genus, order, phyla, right? You divide them according to their categories. That is known as taxonomy okay so according to taxonomy that does not mean upsc will ask you ki koi species they'll give you the name of a species and they will ask you that what is the phyla or phylum of the species which family does it belong to no what they expect you to know is 
that if a certain species is given to you where does it actually fit in and what are the similar kind of species that you will find so for example they will they will give you the name of four species like crab spider mite and then they will ask you which one is the odd one out okay so that requires you an understanding of the species where they fall in the taxonomy apart from that a major shift which we are observing in upsc nowadays especially in the last 2 to 3 years is that upsc is moving towards behavioral characteristics of species it is moving towards behavior so behavior does not only mean uh, you know whether it is aggressive or docile jaise hum normally humans ke liye behavior bolte hain that is not behavior behavior means everything right from sleeping pattern to eating pattern to what they eat right including reproduction all those things which are a functional aspect of a species are covered under behavior so behavior of species has become extremely prominent moving on to the other part pollution okay pollution i hope you're noting this down because you will forget it because when you prepare your notes should be under these subheads the notes that you're preparing for this exam should be under these particular subheads okay so note this down pollution in pollution there are usually two things which are asked see pollution is all pervasive okay aisa nahi hai ki pollution kahin pe hai aur kahin pe nahi hai so they will ask you ki kahan pe pollution hai aur kahan nahi ideally pollution has two kinds of questions one is the sources okay what are the sources of pollution so for example if they have to ask you what are the sources of sulfur pollution there will be sulfur emissions okay where where all what all are the sources of sulfur also for example let's say carbon let's say methane okay specific sources of specific pollutants benzene also upsc has asked once okay apart from that impact impact is also a major part in addition to these two things there is something like air quality index okay all the activities or all the initiatives taken by the government especially in india okay to deal with pollutants come under this ambit so aapko pehle pollution ki theory samajhni hai ki wo sources kya hai uska impact kya hai and then you have to have a separate section under your notes where you will be dealing with what are the steps taken by the government to deal with pollution india so for example let's say fly ash utilization will come under that for example graded response action plan what is graded response action plan come on you all are living in delhi yes what ncr bolo bolo learn to frame sentences it's important because exam mein to examiner padhega aap kya likh rahe ho it is a plan yes yes according to the severity of air pollution in delhi okay aqi is uh, let's say 0 to 100 below 200 or 200 to 300 or 300 plus which is in the severe category there is a plan which the ncr has devised that will be followed the government of india has devised it will be followed that means agar air quality index moves to severe category following actions will be taken for example the construction activities in ncr region will be shut down okay likewise so graded response so as per the grade of the aqi there is a response mechanism which will be put into place so these are initiatives that are taken by the government to combat pollution all right these questions are also a favorite with upsc next come to climate change please note down climate change climate change is a topic which is going nowhere for the next 100 200 years bare minimum it's going nowhere it is here for us to experience and it is here for us to memorize and learn for the exam okay this topic will never lose, lose relevance never come what may the only thing is there are two aspects to this topic prelims oriented and mains oriented when you talk about mains oriented you will have a lot of uh, you know information to give to the examiner in terms of 
let's say what is the kind of climate change we have experienced that means what is the temperature to which we are already experiencing global warming what should be the temperature to which we should control it let's say 1.5 degree celsius or 2 degree celsius is the target okay there are conventions there are measures that are being taken there are international intergovernmental bodies that are working on it so those will be a mains perspective from prelims perspective again similar things but they will be asked in a more objective manner okay the only thing is in prelims we have observed a tendency by upsc to ask questions on technologies related to climate change so for example what is carbon sequestration anybody just take a guess carbon sequestration absorption of excess carbon dioxide from the atmosphere okay and you want to trap that because carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and it has a tendency to increase the temperature of the earth so we want to trap that gas and ultimately put it somewhere now in order to put it somewhere and keep it trapped somewhere we need certain technologies okay so those technologies are usually asked by upsc and this is what this is a form of adaptation that means jo carbon dioxide already emit ho chuka hai that means the carbon dioxide that is already there we are bringing it back another way to reduce is by not emitting further so for that you will probably need alternative fuels okay so we want to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels so both aspects are covered by upsc technology wise upsc asks more question in prelims so in mains you will have more questions like uh, you know uh, what are let's say the principles of panchamrit panchamrit everybody knows what is panchamrit hmm, those who are nodding please answer what is panchamrit yes yes panch name is itself is telling you it has five principles so basically these are five pledges which have been taken by the government of india that we will do the following in order to reduce our emissions so for example we will become a carbon neutral country by 2070 okay we will have 40 45 gigawatt or 45% emission intensity okay these targets have been laid down by the government of india that this is what we will achieve in order to make our economy more decarbonized we will not be dependent more on fossil fuels so these are the kind of things jo mains will be important but in prelims upsc will not ask you uh, you know questions related to let's say theoretical aspect of it they will ask you what is green hydrogen they will ask you what is a fuel cell so the question nature of questions in prelims becomes a bit more technical of course it is a overlap with environment and science but you have to do latest technologies coming up in the climate arena automatically become important okay understood okay going further laws and acts domestic and international always always important whether these are small initiatives or these are major acts or major conventions like unf triple c like cbd cms okay or they are smaller initiatives like r2 code of practices we'll we'll come to those questions you will have an understanding so both big small initiative bottom line is what we have observed in the prelims paper is sometimes a very small initiative whose name is only given in the middle of article somewhere that according to this particular group or according to this database okay just the name is written there and the article itself is talking about something else upsc will ask that so major everybody covers everybody covers majors because they are taught to you in the classes right they are there in the books they are there in the material but what people are unable to solve are these kind of questions in which the names are given somewhere deep within the article i will show you examples of that also okay again both domestic and international another hot favorite topic of upsc is agriculture extremely favorite extremely important again they will not ask you 
that which crop is better suited for which environment that is for geography okay that will be discussed in geography those questions are not classified in environment but with related to environment the questions will be other technologies of agriculture which are which are environment friendly for example permaculture for example natural farming for example vertical farming okay again these are concepts which will not be taught to you in other static subjects geography will not cover this so this falls under the ambit of environment and these are frequently seen in news all right everybody got a brief understanding of the overall structure all right let's start yeah before i completely start <laughs> diving deep into the questions you all have these common questions related to sources everybody wants to know that what are the sources now currently tell me tell me tell me what are the sources that you are referring to apart from some basic books you are all referring to coaching or you know institutes notes that's okay but that will not be enough because those notes cover only the static portions which are anyway there in your ncrts okay what you need is like i told you in topics like pollution climate change agriculture upsc is asking latest technologies latest things that are going on there were two questions on green hydrogen this year so do you think that will be covered by those books no you have to follow down to earth down to earth news if you just write down to earth on google google it you will find a news tab there will be a news okay like this see this is the news tab in down to earth if you click this all the latest news related to climate agriculture even sometimes geographical phenomena so let's say for example enso has affected various parts of india in recent decades here is how what is enso el nino southern oscillation okay so you might think that this is a geography topic geography teacher will tell you about el nino but the article is to talking about how it has affected various parts of india differently separately in recent decades and it explains here is how these are the kind of things that upsc expects you to know that how climate is changing how things are behaving differently what you will be taught in geography ncrt related to el nino will be the most basic form it will talk about the temperature difference between two oceans that is something which is the most basic definition but you need to read these kind of articles and everything so in down to earth this is one source which we absolutely swear by and that is because multiple times many times and i will show you with the questions also we have found answers in articles of down to earth and nowhere else okay so down to earth is something that is a must do all right moving on so down to earth also has for example you know you see here belem declaration belem declaration amazon countries fail to agree on protection goals so it is telling you the name of a particular declaration which is dealing with amazon rainforests upsc can simply ask you belem declaration is related to okay all these things have to be covered all right moving on apart from that hindu of course you can also refer to indian express but sometimes what happens in in our daily reading of newspaper we skip these articles related to environment science and technology because we are busy reading political news we are busy reading editorials so what you can do is within hindu you can let's say go to the archives or go to the sectional division under this under science and technology health agriculture you will find environment just click on environment and you will get all the news related to environment keep going back in the pages and you will cover your environment section up to the date you want to last year june tak karna hai jab bhi karna hai you can just keep going back but refer to the pages okay refer to the news this activity has to be done if you have to crack the exam reason being all current affairs magazines 
all current affairs and material in the market will cover major news. So, for example, they will cover Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework, a major framework after CBT has come related to biodiversity. They will cover that. But the smaller news, you know, the smaller news will get lost. And that is something UPSC picks on. Even one article in the Hindu can be a source of question in UPSC. That is the importance. I will again give examples to you for this. And finally, NCRT. This book, Class 12th Biology NCRT, which has chapters related to basic ecology and also structural organization of plants and animals, this is extremely important. Ecosystem related, four chapters, four or five chapters are there. Those have to be covered and a little bit. If you can do this, it is great. But biodiversity, ecology related chapters have to be covered. Okay? It defines what is an ecosystem, what is ecology, what are terrestrial ecosystems, what are aquatic ecosystems, what are the divisions in aquatic ecosystems. Those kind of fundamental terms are covered by NCRT. And that is an absolute must. Again, I will show you some questions which have been directly lifted from NCRT book. Okay, shall we start the analysis? Okay. We'll start with questions based on laws and acts. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Read the question. Okay, <coughs> so this is a 2023 question, okay, that means this year's question, obviously we do not have the official answer key as yet, but whatever according to us is the best answer key that I will share with you. So the question says, once the central government notifies an area as a community reserve, okay, so central government has the power to notify some area as a community reserve and community reserves are defined under the wildlife protection act okay so what are the activities that can or cannot be done in that area once it is notified it says chief wildlife warden will become the governing authority of such forest hunting will not be allowed people of such area are allowed to collect non timber forest produce what is non timber that means what is timber Lakdi, right? Lakdi. So, other than Lakdi or be forest producer, for example, let us say Tendu leaves. Tendu leaves, everybody knows, okay, or some fruit, okay. So, people of such area are allowed to collect non timber forest produ uh, produce. That means they cannot cut trees, but they can collect other forest produce. And people so of such area are allowed traditional agricultural practices. That means within the people, within that area, the forest dwellers who are staying there are allowed to continue, they can continue practicing their agriculture in a small landscape, okay, small area. So, what is the answer? C. So, which one is not allowed? 4. So, you think traditional agricultural practices are not allowed? They are allowed? We are talking about community reserve. Okay. Now, let us first see the source of this question, down to earth. 2023 ka question hai, published Friday 30th September 2022, okay, 6 months before the exam. Community reserves, are they forest departments backdoor entry into northeast India? Okay, this is the title of the quest article. This might seemingly be a very regular article, but you see, after a forest has been made into com community reserves, people cannot hunt there, nor can they use it for agricultural practices, leave alone zoom cultivation. Clearly this line is mentioned, isn't it? 
that means any ongoing issue or problem that people are facing related to some acts of the government let's say wildlife protection act or any policy of the government becomes a hot topic for upsc so they ask you questions related to rights of the people with respect to that area all right okay so let's see the act itself talks about this is a these are the provisions of the act in the wildlife protection act things are written like this so it will declare a community reserve so what is community reserve what is community reserve how is it different from wildlife sanctuary and national parks yes so ba basically it is sometimes a buffer area between two protected areas okay itna bada nahi hai ki aap usko ek independent wildlife sanctuary bana do but it is a buffer area so the questers this particular article talks about the chief wildlife warden shall be the authority who shall control manage and maintain all sanctuaries and sanctuaries ka aage ye hai so within this the provisions of this paragraph it is also referring to community reserves so yes chief wildlife warden does manage that means everything comes under the control of chief wildlife warden and come back to the question hunting is allowed no people of such area are allowed to practice kaha abhi to padha ki nahi allowed leave alone zoom cultivation yahi to likha hai wahan pe nor can they use it for agricultural practices even if it is traditional this is what it is saying that is what the article is saying community reserves are they forest departments backdoor entry into northeast india that means they are gaining control of the forests they may not be declaring it as a wildlife sanctuary or as a national park yet they are gaining control provisions are written in the act again my point is the answer key to this question is still tentative because we don't have the official answer key but this is what directly we have found and it can't be wrong okay and this is because these are the comments of a forest expert so this can't be wrong okay anyway and people of such area are allowed to collect non timber forest produce okay so we still don't know whether the answer is only one or only two somewhere in the middle all right but what does the analysis tell you the analysis tells you once you have a final answer key we will know but the analysis tells you see anyway uh, uh anyway the analysis at least tells you this much that down to earth is a important resource from which articles are important and questions are asked directly because there is no other magazine there is no other newspaper which has dealt with this particular issue is this clear okay now moving on again this uh point talks about community reserves how are they to be managed okay whether there will be a representative of the wildlife department there will be village panchayat there will be members of gram sabha everything is mentioned in the act all right so the question again nowhere in no textbooks none of the institutes ref notes that you are referring to will have covered this because all this is written in fine print in the act and the only source which is a common source is down to earth which appears to have covered and touched this topic all right moving on let's see this question which one of the following has been constituted under the environment protection act central water commission central ground water board central ground water authority national water development agency what is the answer central ground water authority okay so if you go to the website you will find that the authority has been conferred with the following powers that means under section 5 of the environment protection act it has got these powers so central ground water authority has been constituted under environment protection act 1986 now this similar question same question same point 
was asked by UPSC in 2020. This is a 2022 question. Exact thing was asked in 2020. Consider the following statements. The CGWA, that is the Central Groundwater Authority was formed under the Environment Protection Act. Same thing has been repeated. This question is a total giveaway. Okay, so anybody who has solved the previous years will know that Central Groundwater Authority is an important body and has to be covered. And a very simple question was asked just two years later that it is uncovered under the Environment Protection Act. You see the repetition? We will come across more repetitions as we go further. Okay, now 36% of India's districts are classified as overexploited or critical by the Central Groundwater Authority. Technically, this statement is correct if you calculate the number of questions, but in the answer key given by UPSC, this question statement was marked wrong. Until date, we don't know why. There will always be questions which will have doubts. But irrespective of that, at least we know that UPSC has a tendency to ask questions related to the number of districts or the percentage of districts that are classified as overexploited and critical. So it makes it important for us to understand that this distinction is also important. Third statement, India has the largest area under groundwater irrigation in the world. This is correct? This is correct. This is correct. Groundwater irrigation. 90% of our groundwater is used for irrigation. It is not used for households. It is not used for industry. It is used for irrigation. Okay, so this statement is correct. Okay, clear? Repetition of themes? Okay, so now, now that you know that this particular body has been asked by UPSC, the next best thing to do is note down the names of these bodies and read about them. Have you written them down? Have you written them down? Please note them down. Central Water Commission and understand what is the difference in their mandates. Central Water Commission, Central Groundwater Board and National Water Development Agency. And just write a question next to it that what are the differences? So all these bodies become important. Another question related to Act. As per the recent as amendment to the Indian Forest Act 1927, forest dwellers have the right to fell the bamboos grown on forest areas. Now if you see closely, this Act was enacted way before independence. This was in 1927. So do you think Britishers will enact an act or they will promulgate an act, you know, ordinance or act in order to facilitate or help the traditional people gain access rights or gain access to resources? In all likelihood, acts will have certain provisions which will curtail their freedom. Okay? Thinking on these lines also, one can mark this statement wrong. Okay? So it is not this act which is giving rights to the traditional forest dwellers, which is the act, it is the Forest Rights Act. Okay? And because it specifically talks about bamboos, bamboo was declared recently as a minor forest produce. Before this, bamboo was not classified as a minor forest produce. That means the traditional dwellers also could not harvest bamboo from the forest. But after its declaration as a minor forest produce, they got rights to harvest bamboo. Alright? So, let's see the next statement. As per the scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers, recognition of Forest Rights Act 2006, bamboo is a minor forest produce. This statement is correct. Okay? And this is the name of the act which is commonly known as the Forest Rights Act. And Forest Rights Act falls under the purview of which ministry?
Ministry of Tribal Affairs. This question was also asked by UPSC in prelims. And the reason is because under this particular act, you are giving rights to the tribal people. All right. So it comes under the implementation of this act falls under the mandate of the Ministry of Tribal Affairs. Clear? Okay. Again, the scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers recognition of Forest Rights Act allows ownership of minor forest produced to forest dwellers. This is correct. Okay. This is correct. So the answer to this question is 2 and 3. Alright. Clear? Now, moving on. Again. Is this clear? I hope this is uh, it's a little stretched. Anyway, as per law, the Compensatory Afforestation Fund Management and Na Planning Authority exists at both national and state levels. So, what is compensatory afforestation? That means if someone is defor doing deforestation or they are cutting some trees to gain access to land, then in order to compensate for the deforestation that they have done, they have to do compensatory afforestation. Either they can do it at some at this you know similar place or the government can tell them that you go to a certain land area and you do that. And they have to deposit funds uh, which is known as the CAMPA fund. Okay, this is the fund, compensatory afforestation fund. All right. Now this particular committee, CAMPA is done at both national and state level. Going further, you will read about its provisions and you will get a better understanding. Okay. So the statement itself is a relatively easy one. This most people could have solved. People's participation is mandatory in the compensatory afforestation programs carried out under this fund act. So it's saying is people's participation mandatory? Now, this is a 2019 question. Again in 2018, this is 14th August 2018. There was a question related to green fund rules notified. Some hits, some major misses. So this particular article is dealing with the rules of the Compensatory Afforestation Fund Act are better than the draft but not impactful. Okay. So it is talking, it is this particular article of down to earth is analyzing the rules which came about. And in this particular article, see it's written, this implies that consultations with either of this body will suffice for developing the working plans and Gram Sabhas do not have to be mandatorily consulted. Okay, That means, what are Gram Sabhas by the way? In local governance, in, in Panchayati Raj institutions, Gram Sabhas are the lowest level at the hierarchy and these bodies means, that means, they comprise of all the adults of a village, 18 years of age and plus, who are enrolled in the voter list. Okay. So, Gram Sabha members will not be consulted, will not be consulted, do not have to be mandatorily consulted. And that is why this question was asked. It is mandatory to people's participation. Gram Sabha means all adults of a gaon, right? all adults who are enrolled in the voter list. That's a big number. That does not mean selected panchayat or panch or sarpanch or five people. That means all the adults of a village. So people's participation is mandatory. No, it is not. Again, covered in down to earth. So why it is important? Sometimes what happens is when government is, uh, you know, enacting certain rules, certain <coughs> laws, policies, it is not easy for a layman. Wo language aapne dekha hai, community reserve mein kaisa tha, wildlife warden wala. It is not easy for a layman to go through the fine print and understand what it implies. Which is why articles like these, which are breaking it down for you to understand, ki at the ground level, what are the powers have been given to whom, what has changed, is what makes these articles important. And this is what UPSC tends to ask. Let's go further. Another act re related question. Now, Wildlife Protection Act, to matlab hot favorite hai UPSC ka. 
okay so this is an absolute must in fact in some years upsc has asked two to three questions in the same paper related to wildlife protection act and the question that we saw related to community reserve is also a part of wildlife protection act so wildlife protection act is like a big star you have to mark it okay now if a particular plant species is placed under schedule 6 of the wildlife protection act 1972 what is the implication if a particular plant species is placed under schedule 6 so what is a schedule by the way जब कोई भी एक डॉक्यूमेंट होता है या लॉ होता है देर इज चैप्टर्स अंडर सर्टन हेड्स राइट दैट इज गिवन सो लेट्स से लेट्स इन वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन हैक्ट यू विल हैव अ चैप्टर रिलेटेड टू वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरीज बायोडाइवर्सिटी सो ऑन एंड सो फॉर टूवर्ड्स द एंड लाइक यू हैव इन योर एन सी आर टीज और बुक्स देर आर अपेंडिस जिसमें टेबल्स दिए होंगे और देर इज ग्लॉसरी जिसमें एंड में टर्म्स दी होंगी सो दोज आर शेड्यूल्स ओके सो वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट हैज सिक्स शेड्यूल्स towards the end of the act and what are these schedules talking about schedule 1 and part 2 part of schedule 2 both of them list the name of animals which are endangered species and are given absolute protection from hunting they are endangered and they are absolutely this is this endangered is not iucn endangered this means that they are under threat okay and they will be given absolute protection no matter what so schedule 1 means absolute full full blown protection to them for example tiger schedule 3 and 4 okay they also have similar provisions they also provide similar protection but the intensity is a little lesser and cover animals that are not in danger of becoming extinct that means jo bahut zyada under threat nahi hai okay schedule 5 it delineates animals that can be hunted like ducks and deers with the prior permission of chief wildlife warden that means vermins vermin animals vermins means animals who can be hunted down but you have to take permission of the chief wildlife warden of the state who is the chief wildlife warden is he a politician is he a, bu a bureaucrat or what yes so the highest level forest officer of a state is the chief wildlife warden okay so for example an is officer becomes a district magistrate uske commensurate us district mein forest officer hota hai dfo district forest officer okay you go up the ranks at the state level the highest is officer perhaps becomes the chief secretary of the state and equivalent to that or the highest level secretary level officer would be the chief wildlife warden okay so schedule 5 lists animals who can be hunted down but you need permission of this and schedule 6 deals with cultivation and plant life which gives teeth to setting up of more protected animal parks so basically schedule 6 deals with those plants that require a license to be cultivated you can cultivate these plants but you require a license aise nahi ki aapne kahin bhi wo plant grow kar diya because of certain species because of certain characteristics of that plant okay let's take a look at the plants <coughs> acha we'll go going further i think we'll see that ha huh, so this is the look at so currently schedule 6 of the wildlife protection act has named only a few plants that is bedoms cycad which is native to india blue vanda red vanda koot koot is also a medicinal plant okay some of you might have heard koot slipper orchid and finally pitcher plant these are the photographs of those plants okay so these are the plants these few names are written in schedule 6 and in order to grow these plants you have to take permission and you have to take a license so that is exactly what the question was asking if you see the options option is a license is required to cultivate that plant such a plant cannot be cultivated under any circumstances it is a genetically modified plant 
or such a plant is invasive and harmful to the ecosystem the thing is when this question came till this year 2020 everybody used to read schedule 6 mein panch che plants ke naam hai that's all people used to because they used to focus on the other schedules ki schedule 5 is vermin schedule 1 and 2 or 3 are talking about protection of animals and pred schedule 6 mentions some plants but nobody focused on what is the requirement of schedule 6 it requires you to take a license that is how upsc sets traps in things which are commonly heard and known but you are still confused these options can be very confusing ki whether such plant can be cultivated under any circumstance lot of people marked this option and got it wrong okay chalo next again wildlife protection act 2017 question according to this act which of the following animals cannot be hunted by any person unless some provision is provided by law that means they cannot be hunted at all so that means they get the maximum protection that is under schedule 1 and the all of them are there ghadiyal indian wild ass wild buffalo naam sunne mein lag raha hai wild buffalo hai to itna shayad endangered nahi hoga but the truth is all of them are a part of this this is also a biodiversity related question okay ki aapka aapko pata hona chahiye ki india mein kon kon se animals endangered hai aur nahi hai similar question in 2017 i told you there are questions in the same year which have been repeated wildlife protection act pe do question <coughs> in india if a species of tortoise is declared protected under schedule 1 what does it imply it enjoys the same level of protection as a tiger it no longer exists in the wild and only a few and individuals are under captive protection it is endemic to a particular region of india both b and c a it enjoys the same level of protection as a tiger understood okay now this question the environment protection act 1986 empowers the government of india to so what all powers does a act give dekho act ka kaam sirf ye nahi hai ki ye bachao wo bachao ye protect karo koi kisi ko protect tabhi kar sakta hai if some authority is given the power to protect it okay so acts usually have details related to power delegation the state state the requirement of public participation in the process of environmental protection and the procedure and manner in which it is sought <coughs> so this particular act does it empower the government of india to take public participation into account it does but only through the eia rules that is the environment impact assessment rules it is the rules which give that power but rules have been no doubt promulgated under this but this particular act does not give power to the central government so this statement is wrong the rules that is the Im environment impact assessment rules have given this power to the government to take public consult what is environment impact assessment that means if any project is being taken up for example ek dam build ho raha hai so the the particular authorities of let's say the district authorities of that district will gather the people together and say okay we are planning to construct so and so dam in your area are you okay with it do you think there will be some environment impact are there any special species which you think will get affected which are not there around so that process of public consultation is done under environment impact assessment it is not done by this act per se that is why this statement is wrong environment easy nahi hai sabko lag raha tha na environment hi to hai kya no it's not easy it's very technical okay and it lays down the standards for emission or discharge of environmental pollutants from various sources this is correct this statement is correct okay now see this question as per the solid waste management rules 2016 note this the question was asked in 2019 the rules came in 
सिक्सटीन दिस इज फॉर ऑल दोज ऑफ यू हु फील लास्ट टू थ्री ईयर्स का करंट अफेयर्स नहीं पढ़ना है ऐसा नहीं है यू पी एस सी इज गोइंग बैक इन टाइम दे आर आस्किंग क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम लास्ट टू थ्री ईयर्स ओके सो ऐसा नहीं कि लास्ट वन ईयर में जो रूल्स आए हैं उसी पर ही क्वेश्चन होंगे नाउ इट सेज अ वेस्ट जनरेटर हैज टू सेग्रिकेट वेस्ट इन टू फाइव कैटेगरीज इज इज करेक्ट नो सो जनरली वेस्ट सेग्रिकेटर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन आर हाउस होल्ड वी डू इट इन टू ड्राई एंड वेट एंड देर इज वन मोर कैटेगरी विच इज सैनिटरी ओके सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल डायपर्स एंड ऑल विल बी थ्रोन इन दैट then the rules are applicable to notified urban local bodies notified towns and all industrial townships only wherever you come the across the word only all none thoda sa us statement pe think again these are qualifiers which tend to make a statement wrong these cannot be the only areas where it is applied it is even applied to extensions of urban agglomerations okay so these are not the only areas the rules provide for exact and elaborate criteria for the identification of sites for landfills and waste processing facilities this is the correct answer okay and anyway it doesn't matter this is the answer see the point is all acts and policies laws related things upsc asks in details because as future administrators these are the laws which you will be implementing okay as is officers as forest service officers these are the laws and policies jinka finer print bhi aapko padhna padega and you are expected to know so that you can apply and implement these acts in your particular jurisdiction so that is why these things become important okay anyways solid waste management rules were a lot in news and all of these points were covered ye to basic hai कि वो वेस्ट सेग्रीगेशन कौन से कैटेगरीज में कर रहा है कहाँ कहाँ अप्लाई हो रहा है एंड व्हाट आर द अदर प्रोविजंस ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर रूल्स सो रूल्स एंड एक्ट्स एंड पॉलिसीज बिकम इम्पॉर्टेंट नाउ सम क्वेश्चंस ऑफ बेसिक इकोलॉजी ओके एक्ट्स एंड लॉज का आई हैव गिवन यू अ फ्लेवर व्हाट आर द काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन लेट्स सी अ फ्यू क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम बेसिक इकोलॉजी थोड़ा एन पे आते हैं लेट्स कूल डाउन अ बिट ओके Biological oxygen demand BOD is a standard criteria for. This question can be easily answered. Oxygen levels in blood, huh? Pollution assay in aquatic ecosystems. So, what is oxygen demand? That means the more the number of pollution in that particular water body, the more will be the number of organisms. that mean more organisms will take up more oxygen and there will be lesser oxygen in the pond okay in the aquatic ecosystem lesser the oxygen more the demand lesser the oxygen lesser is the availability that means more is the demand okay so bod is a identification marker for pollution in a particular water body answer this question which of the following leaf modifications occur in the desert areas hard and waxy leaves tiny leaves thorns instead of leaves all three are correct okay this is to reduce transpiration loss easy theek hai to ye jo questions aate hai na paper mein this is a absolute low hanging fruit which should be caught okay these should not have been missed because tough questions i have already shown you what they look like that is why your ncrts and your let's say down to earth again i'll show you some low hanging fruits have to be done very thoroughly because wo jo technical wale questions mein unme you are bound to get stuck okay let's go forward let's deal with biodiversity biodiversity means plants animals and and microorganisms okay so all are a part of biodiversity so like i told you taxonomy related questions and behavioral questions okay so <coughs> marsupials what are marsupials give me an example of marsupials kangaroo is an example of marsupials marsupials are those organisms in which the placenta what is a placenta placenta is an organ which grows inside the womb of a mother which provides nutrition to the child inside okay 
so in such animals the placenta organ is very rudimentary it is not fully developed because of which the child does not receive proper nutrition inside the mother's womb so the child does a premature birth there is a premature birth of the child that takes place so when the child is born it is not fully developed once it comes out then it draws nutrition from the mother maybe through breast milk or otherwise and finally grows into an adult so if you see a kangaroo taking birth how big is a kangaroo normally show it to me this much itna to hoga theek hai when a kangaroo takes birth it it is this much it's this small that is the level of premature birth that takes place okay and then it goes and stays inside the pouch of the mother which is an external and finally draws nutrition understood so this is a beauty of marsupials now marsupials the question is talking about marsupials location and habitat okay now are marsupials found in india no marsupials are not naturally found in india this is correct we don't know of any marsupials in india marsupials can thrive only in montane grasslands with no predators is this correct only क्या आपने देखा है कि कैंगरू सिर्फ पहाड़ी चढ़ रहा है माउंटेन माउंटेन ग्रासलैंड्स कहीं भी देखा है नहीं देखा ना सो दिस इज आल्सो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज रॉन्ग दिस इज करेक्ट नाउ जस्ट टेक अ लुक दीज आर द काइंड ऑफ मार्सूपियल्स सी दिस कैंगरू वोम्बैट ओके स्पॉटेड टेल्ड नेटिव कैट दीज आर सम ऑफ द मार्सूपियल्स एंड मार्सूपियल्स आर ओनली फाउंड इन दीज एरियाज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड 70% of the marsupials are found in this region oceania that is australia and new zealand and other pacific some pacific islands okay a few some of them 30% are here in america also but 70% are in oceania region now why was this question asked jab india mein hai hi nahi to kyu puch rahe hai bhai humko yahi kaam reh gaya hai duniya bhar ke janwar padhte rahe ha kya वाइल्ड लाइफ है तो ऐसे तो कितनी वाइल्ड लाइफ है हम कितने स्पीशीज पढ़ेंगे वाइल्ड फायर अच्छा अच्छा यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दी ऑस्ट्रेलियन वाइल्ड फायर ओके चलो फेयर इन ऑफ पॉइंट और तो फिर ये क्यों पूछ रहे हैं कि इंडिया में है कि नहीं वैसे ही पूछ लो कुछ वी हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई सोर्सेज वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज द मोटिवेशन ऑफ यूपीएससी फॉर आस्किंग सच क्वेश्चन मोटिवेशन इज रिसेंटली कैंगरू वॉज स्पॉटेड इन नॉर्थ ईस्ट इंडिया जब ये न्यूज आई ना दिस क्वेश्चन से एक अराउंड दैट टाइम वन ईयर इन दैट वन ईयर स्पैन कैंगरूज वर स्पॉटेड इन नॉर्थ ईस्ट इंडिया अब कहाँ से आ गया कैंगरू इन नॉर्थ ईस्ट इंडिया अभी तो क्वेश्चन बोल रहे हैं आर नॉट नेचुरली फाउंड इन इंडिया स्मगलिंग दैट्स राइट ही इज राइट द आंसर इज स्मगलिंग Actually, it came through smuggling. People were smuggling. वो बिचारा भाग गया. And वो जंगल में किसी को दिख गया. And everyone was like, "Wow, kangaroo." <laughs> okay. This is exactly what happened. And see, UPSC has asked a question. ठीक है. So, ऐसे जो टेडी बेडी न्यूज़ आती है ना एनिमल्स पे स्पीशीज़ रिलेटेड. ये पक्का पढ़नी है. ठीक है. And you have to read in that context. I will show you an example where उसी कंटेक्स्ट में UPSC asks questions. न्यूज यही थी दैट दे वर फाउंड इन नॉर्थ ईस्ट इंडिया एंड यूपीएससी आस्ट द नेचुरल हैबिटेट ठीक है अगेन लेट्स सी और आगे देखते हैं अच्छा आई शो यू अभी और आएगा एग्जांपल ठीक है एनीवे दिस इज आल्सो अनदर क्वेश्चन यूपीएससी आस्ट दिस ईयर लायन टेल्ड मकाक मालाबार सिवेट सांबर डियर हाउ मेनी ऑफ द बव आर जनरली नॉक्टर्नल और मोस्ट एक्टिव आफ्टर सनसेट इनके बारे में पता है इनकी शक्लें पता है देखो बायोडाइवर्सिटी नाम पढ़ के कभी याद नहीं होगी इफ आई टेल यू सम सम राहुल विल यू नो विच राहुल हाँ ओके और इफ आई टेल यू सम शंकर विल यू नो विच शंकर अनलेस यू सी शंकर देन यू विल नो विच शंकर यू विल ऑलवेज रिमेंबर हिम दैट इज द पॉइंट आर ब्रेन वर्क ऑन पिक्टोग्राफिक मेमरी so with biodiversity with species please do us a favor thoda sa unki photos dekh liya karo tabhi yaad rahega 
ठीक है वरना याद नहीं रहने वाला एक डेढ़ साल तो फर्स्ट अटैम्प्ट के लिए है उसके बाद और दो तीन अटैम्प्ट भी लग सकते हैं कितना पढ़ना है तो यही थोड़ी काम रह गया ओके ऑल राइट नाउ गेटिंग बैक लायन टेल्ड मकाक इज बेसिक वॉट डज इट लुक लाइक कुछ तो आइडिया दो मंकी मंकी वेरी गुड क्लोजेस्ट टू मंकी सो दे आर फाउंड एट द ट्री टॉप्स ओके एंड मालाबार सिवेट एंड सांबर डियर आर समवेयर ऑन द फॉरेस्ट फायर सो डू यू थिंक ट्री टॉप पे जो एनिमल है वो रात को एक्टिव होगा होगा इट इज अ बिट अनलाइकली ठीक है द द आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन इज लायल टेल्ड मकाक इज नॉट अ नक्टर्नल एनिमल वाइल दीज टू आर मालाबार सिवेट तो इज मोस्ट सर्टनली इज बिकॉज इट प्रेज ऑन इट्स स्मॉल प्रिडेटर्स ड्यूरिंग नाइट टाइम एंड सांबर डियर ऑल्सो इज एक्टिव ड्यूरिंग डॉन एंड डस्क अगेन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री क्वेश्चन कीज आर सब्जेक्ट टू यू पी एस सी आंसर्स और राइट एनी वे चलो सो वाई डू सम स्पीशीज वाई आर दे नॉक्टर्नल दे वॉन्ट टू अवॉइड प्रिटेटर्स बिकॉज दिन में दे वाइट गेट कॉट इजीली दे हैव लेस कॉम्पिटिशन एट नाइट फॉर रिसोर्सेज एवोल्यूशन बिकॉज ऑफ एवोल्यूशनरी फैक्टर्स then they want to match the prey schedule for example the food that they feed on or the animals that they feed on are mostly active during night time so they want to match that schedule and they want to limit human encounter these are some of the reasons let's take a look at some of the nocturnal animals name this animal pangolin very good this is honey badger i've written in case this is indian wolf this is indian civet तो मालाबार सेवेट है ना इट लुक्स लाइक दिस ओके दिस इज स्लो लॉरिस ओके दिस इज दिस इज चीता इंडिया वक, इंडिया वाले हैं ये इंडिया में तो बेचारे चीता सरवाइव ही नहीं कर पा रहा एंड दिस इज अ ब्लैक बियर ओके एंड दिस इज अ चलो आ, अभी आगे आएगा वो ठीक है एनी वे so we have to see pictures of animals and plants in order to remember them it will always help you otherwise you will feel lost okay ab let's go forward which of the following organisms perform waggle dance for others of their kin to indicate the direction and the distance to a source of their food honey bee aata tha ki answer pehle dekhe hue hain question pehle dekha hua hai बहुत लोगों को नहीं आता था द आंसर इज हनी बी एंड लुक दिस इज वॉट इट लुक्स लाइक द वैगल डांस ऑफ हनी बी द पैटर्न इज दिस इट विल गो इन राउंड शेप एंड देन गो लाइक दिस 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 एंड देन अगेन विल कम बैक इन दिस डायरेक्शन दिस इज द डांस ऑफ हनी बी ओके डांस को ये लिटरली डांस नहीं कर रही है जस्ट द फैक्ट दैट इट इज मूविंग इन अ सर्टन पैटर्न इज अ डांस ओके नाउ वॉट इज हैपनिंग इज सी दिस दिस इज द सन okay and here is the source of food so it will do this waggle thing in this particular direction making an angle with the sun if it is doing in this direction man lo yahan pe kar rahi hai the other honey bees next of their kin that is will uh, you know have an estimate that food is making an angle with the sun in this particular direction okay and thus बिकॉज इसका कोई एक एक्सेस भी तो होना चाहिए ना बस ऐसे ऐसे कहीं भी कर रही है यू विल नेवर अंडरस्टैंड द एक्सेस हैज टू बी विद द सन एंड द मोर द नंबर ऑफ आइटरेशन दैट मीन्स जितना ज्यादा वो वैगल कर रही है उतना दूर वो सोर्स है जितना वो कम वैगल कर रही है दैट मीन्स द क्लोजर इट इज सो इट इज गिविंग एन आइडिया ऑफ द डिस्टेंस ऑल्सो इज इन दिस ब्यूटिफुल राइट नाउ सोर्स 2023 question march 11 2023 paper was in june may chalo may end of may march 11 2023 unlocking secrets of the honey bee dance language straight lift straight lift what did i tell you there are articles in the down to earth and hindu where artic you know questions are straight lifted from these straight lifted no institutes books which you are reading okay no material jo aap pad rahe ho will help you newspapers are an absolute must i am not here marketing for a specific newspaper but all i am saying is 
that you have to read newspapers okay clear okay next again 2023 question on biodiversity see all the questions are related to behavior nocturnal hai theek hai dance kar raha hai and marsupials okay a marsupial was a habitat related question but anyway so questions are related to behaviors now see this indian squirrels how many of you have seen squirrels around aur kisi ne nahi dekhi squirrel तो इतना जो हम एनिमल अपने आसपास देखते हैं विच वी नो इज अराउंड अस ऑल द टाइम वाई डेंट वी थिंक ऑफ यू नो फ्रेमिंग अ क्वेश्चन ऑन इट वाई विल नॉट यूपीएससी फ्रेम अ क्वेश्चन ऑन इट ओके नाउ सी दिस दे बिल्ड नेस्ट बाय मेकिंग बरोज इन द ग्राउंड दे स्टोर देयर फूड मटीरियल लाइक नट्स एंड सीड्स इन द ग्राउंड दे आर ओमनी वोरस वॉट इज द आंसर ऑल थ्री they build nest by making burrows in the ground kisi ne kabhi gilleri ka nest tree pe nahi dekha upar ye hai gilleri ka nest this is what it looks like okay and the problem with this question again i'll tell you because we are subject to upsc keys is that if you see the question stem is talking about indian squirrels that means we are not talking about one species we are talking about all the indian squirrels and if you search the net there are so many indian squirrels and the problem uh, which i am yet to tell you <laughs> the problem is that among these squirrels there is only one there is only one which does not build nests on the trees it digs burrows in the ground and that is the himalayan marmot note kar lena himalayan marmot i will show you another previous year question of upsc which is talking about marmot do you see a pattern here that upsc is revolving around certain themes and certain types of questions okay this is why this is an exam of general studies because it seeks general awareness sari general awareness ek book mein nahi dal sakta koi bhi you have to keep your minds and ears and eyes open and you have to use google more extensively kahin pe bhi koi species se related news padhte ho something different okay i also want to tell you that what i feel or it could may not be true also acha uh, that link is not there the question on squirrels was related to their feeding patterns so they store their food in the ground okay and they build their nest up and they are omnivores so two points are related to feeding patterns this squirrel was in news because a man ek video viral hua tha in which a man was feeding kurkure to a squirrel he was sitting on a bench having kurkure aur squirrel bar bar uske paas aake kurkure le rahi thi and it was eating the kurkure and the video went viral of course some people objected to it that this is not safe and this is not good for the animal but that video went nicely viral and in my opinion that could very well have been the reason for this motivation and if you think upsc aise nahi puchta hai nahi nahi i'll show you further examples okay again note this keep this in mind all right let's go further किस पे देखना चाहिए हाँ <laughs> देखो रील्स मत देखो रील्स इज अ अल्ट्रा वेस्ट ऑफ टाइम एंड लाइफ यू विल रियली रिपेंट दिस हैबिट बट इफ समथिंग इज कमिंग इन न्यूज यू नो विद दैट पर्टिकुलर हेडिंग दैट द नेम ऑफ द हेडिंग ऑफ दैट आर्टिकल वाज मैन फीड्स कुरकुरे टू स्क्रल इंटरनेट रिएक्ट्स ओके देन यू कैन थिंक यर वॉट एक्चुअली डज द स्कूरल ईट हाँ इट शुड you know build a question in you that inquisitiveness is what upsc wants all right it may or may not be true now nobody is going to come from upsc and tell us ha maine to isi liye question banaya tha all right that is not going to happen but we just have to look for cues that what could be the possible reason of course it is a fact that indian squirrels are seen all around us and we ought to know about them okay all right now another question very tough question nobody could have answered uh some could have made a guess if they have biology background okay 
सो सम मशरूम्स हैव मेडिसिनल प्रॉपर्टीज ये सम वाला जो फॉर्मेट है ना दिस इज अ वेरी फेवरेट विद यूपीएससी सम दिस आर दिस सम दैट आर दैट ओके सो दे आस्क यू अबाउट एक्सेप्शन नॉम तो है ही है दे आस्क यू अबाउट एक्सेप्शन सो सम मशरूम्स हैव मेडिसिनल प्रॉपर्टीज सम मशरूम्स हैव साइको एक्टिव प्रॉपर्टीज सम मशरूम्स हैव इंटेसेक्टिसाइडल प्रॉपर्टीज सम मशरूम्स हैव बायोल्यूमिनेसेंट प्रॉपर्टीज I don't expect you to know. Even NCERT does not cover it, and it is not easy to answer this question. Nonetheless, the answer is all are correct. Okay, some mushrooms actually have psychotropic properties. They have an effect. Okay, that is why both bari bolte na jungle me se se jungli mushroom utha ke nahi khani chahiye. So you never know. Okay, and they have bioluminescent properties also. They have मेडिसिनल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑल्सो कॉर्डिसेप्स के कैप्सूल्स एंड सप्लीमेंट्स आर ऑल्सो अवेलेबल और ऑन एमेजॉन ओके सो बट इट्स ओके इफ यू डोंट नो दिस इज अ टफ क्वेश्चन ऑल राइट बट वॉट डू वी टेक अवे फ्रॉम दिस मशरूम से रिलेटेड यू पी एस सी हैड आस्ट अ क्वेश्चन अ फ्यू ईयर्स बैक एंड देन इन द प्रीसीडिंग ईयर्स सक्सीडिंग ईयर्स यू पी एस सी आस्ट अ डिटेल्ड क्वेश्चन ऑन मशरूम्स ओके सो मशरूम पे क्वेश्चन वॉज इट इज अ फंगस it is so on and so forth there was a three statement question and a detailed question came let's say two or three years down the line so any topic again that's why i made you write down those water bodies uh, agencies names also any topic or anything that is mentioned in the options is becoming is becomes automatically important for you for the succeeding attempts especially in environment and also in history even in history art and culture and otherwise you will see that this trend is repeating has i think shivi ma'am must have also told you about this that why questions many times you will hear toppers also tell you that often themes are repeated okay okay now question first the leader of an elephant group is a female the the news was see this pregnant wild elephant dies in kerala After a cracker-filled pineapple explodes in her mouth, some absolutely atrocious people they put firecrackers in a pineapple and they fed her the pineapple, and it exploded in her mouth and she died and she was pregnant. Same year, this is June 2020. Okay, this question was asked in 2020. The paper was delayed. It was held in September because of COVID. Okay, so same. Year, two, three months ago, the incident came. UPSC asked question. Now again, the topic is same. Pregnant, the leader of a female uh, elephant group is a female. Okay, female. Fine. Maximum gestation period can be twenty-two months. What is gestation period? That means the amount of time for which the female carries the baby inside her. Okay, so pregnant wild female. An elephant can normally go on calving till the age of forty years only. That means the age till which it can have kids okay and among the states in india the highest elephant population is in kerala is this not a direct link i don't think you need more proof than this this is a direct link which is why again i am telling you biodiversity related questions especially for things which are extremely prevalent in news it automatically translates into a question and on similar topics which is why i have my you know concerns or doubts regarding that squirrel question also if 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 there was it in news <coughs> it it was pretty much there in news that man was feeding kurkure to a squirrel it could very well be a possibility that could have been a motivation for upsc to ask a question on feeding habits or patterns of a squirrel this is the exact same thing all right what is the answer to this question one and two only okay this is not correct and What is the highest elephant population in India? Which state? Find out. Note it down. लिखो ये. And also note down जितनी भी major species हैं like tigers. Tigers का कौन सा है? Tigers, largest state. ये भी note down करो. Find out. <coughs> species which are you know big. which are keystone species which are big and which are spread throughout the length and breadth of the country you can always get confused ki kaun si state mein sabse zyada hai and also because tiger census keeps on happening 
ओके सो लास्ट टाइगर सेंसेस में मध्य प्रदेश वॉज अ हेड ऑफ कर्नाटका बाय टू बट दिस इयर कर्नाटका हैज ओवरटेकन बाय अ ह्यूज नंबर सो दीज थिंग्स कीप चेंजिंग दे आर डायनेमिक ऑल्सो ऑल राइट एनी वे चलो अगेन क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू बायोडाइवर्सिटी इन देयर हैबिटैट दैट मीन्स वेर दे आर नॉर्मली फाउंड सो एशियाटिक लायन इज नेचुरली फाउंड इन इंडिया ओनली इज दिस करेक्ट येस इट इज इन विच गीर गीर डबल हम्प्ड कैमल इज नेचुरली फाउंड इन इंडिया ओनली नो इट इज ऑल्सो फाउंड इन अफगानिस्तान ओके वन हॉन्ड राइनोसरस इज नेचुरली फाउंड इन इंडिया ओनली नो वेर एल्स करेक्ट ओके सो द आंसर इज वन ओनली तीनों स्टेटमेंट्स में ओनली है बट वन इज एक्चुअली राइट सो वॉट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट दैट मीन्स स्पीशीज विच आर ओनली फाउंड इन इंडिया ऑटोमेटिकली बिकम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दे आर ओनली फाउंड इन आवर कंट्री आर दे आर इम्पॉर्टेंट ठीक है ओके सी द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन Iravide dolphin is not found in the Chambal River. Where is it found in India? Hmm. Ha ha. Yes. Who answered? Hmm. Right. Iravide is the name of a river. Where is it? Hmm. Okay. सो ऑल दो प्राइमरिली वहाँ पे है बट इन इंडिया ऑल्सो इट इज़ फाउंड सो यही हमको लर्न करना है कि जो स्पीशीज़ हमें लगता है कि स्पेसिफिकली वहीं की ऐसा नहीं है दे आर ऑल्सो फाउंड इन इंडिया एंड इन इंडिया रेविडे डॉल्फिन इज फाउंड इन लेक चिलिका वेर इज लेक चिलिका स्टेट ओडिशा ओके अगेन इन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग प्लेस इज मोस्ट लाइकली आई यू टू फाइंड मस्क डियर इन इट्स नेचुरल हैबिटैट एस्कॉट वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी एंड गंगोत्री नेचुरल नेशनल पार्क आर लोकेटेड इन विच स्टेट बोथ हार इन उत्तराखंड ओके किशनपुर इज इन यूपी एंड मनास इज इन आसाम ऑल राइट सो द आंसर इज वन एंड टू ओनली ये तो ईजी है दिस इज ईजी इवन इफ यू डोंट नो कि वो कहाँ मिलता है इफ यू जस्ट नो वेर द स्टेट्स आर यू कैन ईजीली एलिमिनेट दीज टू बिकॉज यू विल रिक्वायर अ कोल्डर क्लाइमेट for this particular species and thus the answer will be here understood okay <coughs> taxonomically inspired questions so for example ceylon frog mouth coppersmith barbet grey chinned minivet white throated red start कहीं भी नाम में पढ़ के नहीं पता चल रहा है कि ये कौन सा जानवर है या प्राणी है ओके सो द आंसर इज आर बर्ड्स सो इफ यू कम अक्रॉस द नेम ऑफ अ स्पीशीज जो आपको पढ़ के नहीं समझ आ रहा है कि यार ये बर्ड है या बटरफ्लाई है या कुछ और एनिमल है जस्ट नोट इट डाउन एंड मार्क समवेयर इन योर करंट अफेयर्स नोट्स दैट दिस इज अ सो वन सो फोर दिस इज अ फेवरेट टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी में ऐसा पूछा 2022 में पूछ लिया विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट अ बर्ड अगेन उसमें भी चार नाम थे इसमें भी चार नाम है एंड द आंसर इज गोल्डन महसीर गोल्डन महसीर इज इज अ फिश ओके देर आर मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ महसीर फाउंड इन इंडिया नोट दिस डाउन फाइंड आउट वॉट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ महसीर फाउंड इन इंडिया एंड इन विच ऑल हैबिटैट्स ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन यूपीएससी यही पूछेगा कि महसीर कितने टाइप की और कहाँ कहाँ मिलती हैं सो ऑल एंड ऑल द रेड अदर ऑप्शन प्लीज माइंड यू ऑल द अदर ऑप्शन बिकम इक्वली इम्पॉर्टेंट सो इंडियन नाइट जार भी ढूंढो स्पून बिल भी ढूंढो एंड वाइट इबिस भी ढूंढो एंड ऑल द नेम्स हेयर ऑल्सो बिकम इम्पॉर्टेंट सो इफ दिस इज रिपीटेड एंड यू हैव नॉट स्टडीड दिस इज योर मिस्टेक ओके नोट डाउन दीज नेम्स
डन नहीं हुआ तो बाद में एक बार भी दोबारा यू जस्ट गो थ्रू द स्लाइड्स और यू कैन जस्ट सी द प्रीवियस एज पेपर्स एंड नोट दिस डाउन ठीक है वी आर अ बिट शॉर्ट ऑन टाइम टुडे ऑल राइट अगेन लेट्स सी दिस क्वेश्चन इफ देर इज अज फॉल इन द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ स्पीशीज ऑफ बटरफ्लाईज वॉट कुड इट बी इट्स लाइकली कॉन्सिक्वेंसिस पॉलिनेशन ऑफ सम प्लांट्स विल बी एडवर्सली इफेक्टिव दिस इज ईजी there could be a drastic increase in the fungal infection of some cultivated plants do butterflies have anything to do with fungus of plants not really okay it could lead in the fall of population of some species of wasps spiders and birds is this correct because the food chain will be impacted so some of these feed on butterflies and if the butterflies are gone these will eventually be impacted and fungus of plants has no direct relationship with butterfly so the answer is c 1 and 3 only all right again behavioral if you want to see ghadiyals in their natural habitat similar again natural habitat related questions biodiversity mein taxonomy behavior and natural habitat absolutely important till last of uh, 4 5 6 years upsc was focusing on habitat if you see these questions on habitat but if you see the recent questions like honey bee waggle dance marsupials and other questions related to that they are moving squirrels they are moving to a more behavioral aspect from habitat kyunki after these questions everybody started mugging up habitats of these species to so, upsc ne kaha okay lo beta one more bouncer theek hai all right okay okay this question is a little different this is although uh, related to an initiative of the government m stripes is related to maintenance of tiger reserves okay okay <coughs> now again certain species of which one of the following organisms are well known as cultivators of fungi okay so basically ants is the answer these there are some species of ants which cultivate fungi like we cultivate crops it is like that okay because they have a symbiotic relationship okay the ants get food and the fungi gets shelter and space to grow all right so this is a symbiotic relationship again this is basic ecology but this example has not been covered in ncert so examples of basic ecology that means mutualism ke examples commensalism ke examples amensalism ke examples predation predation khair normal hai all those should be well covered of course you will cover some koi na koi to chhuti jayega because there are millions of symbiotic relationships in the world but as many as we can do that's okay again this was a tougher question not everybody could answer now here which one of the following is a filter uh, feeder what is a filter feeder so uh, there are the ways in which people eat their food like for example human beings will pick up and put it in their mouth okay some like amoeba will surround their food and finally enclose it and then gulp it okay take it within there is something called filter feeding filter feeding means aquatic species which are just moving in the water okay and on account of their movement or current water will pass through their body right and there is certain filters that are there in their body which captures the food and that is how they take that food so that is done by oysters again tough question not many could have answered all right aise questions mein chhodna hai paper mein if you don't know please don't try to make a wild guess either you know or you don't know all right ab 2025 questions upsc puch raha hai to sare to answer nahi kar sakte thode chhodne padenge okay again some 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 species of turtles are herbivores this is correct some species of fish are also herbivores okay some species their juvenile versions are also herbivores some species of marine mammals are herbivores marine mammals in 2013 or 14 upsc had asked a question related to sea cow dugong okay and that is a mammal and it is and it asked in one of the statements it is a herbivore so wo people who had done the previous year question let's say 6 years or 7 years were able to answer this okay and some snakes of species of snakes are viviparous this is taught in schools 
this is taught in schools at least i remember from my school time that some snakes are vivi paris what is vivi pari direct birthing kya what is ovi pari egg laying and vivi pari is direct giving birth that is correct so mammals like are vivi paris they don't give birth to an egg they give up give birth directly to a animal so again behavioral aspect that means reproduction related so all us correct answer is this now i had told you to remember himalayan marmot dekho okay 2021 now consider the following animals to reduce the chance of being captured which of the above roll or protect themselves or their vulnerable parts which of these animals roll down this is pangolin right and this is hedgehog wo pehle picture mein bhi hedgehog hi tha okay so the answer is these two now when you know upsc has asked marmot directly and it has become a exception in one of the answers you ought to read about mammoths so hedgehog mammoth and pangolin tino note kar lo okay pangolin is one of the most highly illegally traded animal in the world why yes again find out so when you are reading about a species basic cheeze uski padha karo you know ki what is its feeding pattern what is its habitat and then search the news tab whether it is in news for some reason that will help you give a context to your preparation also to aapko wo yaad bhi jaldi ho jayega okay <coughs> let's come to some plant species animal biodiversity kya let's come to some plants this question was a little bit of a shocker for everybody because nobody had earlier seen questions related to trees and that to comparison of trees at this level so what is moringa moringa is drumsticks and what is tamarind tim imli tell me uh, tell me the name of a dish which which has both these drumsticks and imli sambar <laughs> okay so the question is saying it is a leguminous evergreen tree this is a very tough question very tough question in fact iska answer dhoondne mein it took us so long because all the research papers were talking about something or the something and to find that it is not leguminous it is misunderstood as a leguminous tree but it is not you don't expect normal aspirants to crack this question unless you are from botany background okay so it's all right and the problem is the answer to this question was resting somewhere on the first statement only so it was either 3 4 5 or 1 3 4 4 okay because we were able to eliminate some of the other statements let's see some of the other statements in india most of the tamarind is corrected as minor forest produce this is correct tamarind tree is endemic to south asia this is not what is endemic what is the difference between native and endemic somebody is answering name native जोर से बोलो वो क्या है हाँ और नेटिव और नेटिव वो कहीं भी जा <laughs> तो क्या अच्छे मार रहे हैं सब या आंसर जहां पे ओरिजिन है वो क्या है और एंडेमिक क्या है एंडेमिक ये है <laughs> या नहीं नहीं द गर्ल बिहाइंड यू आपकी टर्न ओवर हाँ जी ओके सो व्हाट इज एंडेमिक राइट गुड दैट्स व्हाई आई लाइक गर्ल्स girls i'm more sincere yeah anyone else who wants to try she's right the thing is native means ki wo originally wahan ka tha lekin ab aur jagah bhi fail gaya hai you can find it elsewhere also but when you say endemic then it is only found in that particular place okay nowhere else okay all right so yeah so india exports tamarind and uh, seeds of moringa fine seeds of moringa and tamarind can be used in the production of biofuel fine okay this question was tough i don't expect but now 
नाउ दैट यू नो टैमरिंड एंड मोरिंगा पूछ लिया तो प्लीज रीड अबाउट दीज टू ओके प्लीज रीड दू अबाउट दीज टू और कोई सांभर में डलता है तो वो भी पढ़ लेना जस्ट किडिंग ऑल राइट पाम ऑयल द पाम ऑयल ट्री इज नेटिव टू साउथ ईस्ट एशिया दैट मीन्स मिलता सब जगह है बट इट ओरिजिनली केम फ्रॉम साउथ ईस्ट एशिया इट इज अ रॉ मटीरियल फॉर सम इंडस्ट्रीज प्रोड्यूसिंग लिपस्टिक्स एंड परफ्यूम्स येस इट एक्ट लाइक अ बेस लाइन मॉइस्चराइजर ओके पाम ऑयल कैन बी यूज टू प्रोड्यूस बायोडीजल ओके सो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज दिस स्टेटमेंट इज नॉट करेक्ट एंड दीज टू सो पाम ऑयल इज अ नेटिव ऑफ विच प्लेस हिमालय लिखो ढूंढ के लाओ चलो डू सम होमवर्क नोट इट डाउन एवरीबडी एल्स शुड फाइंड आउट ओके विच वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज यूज इन प्रिपेयरिंग अ नेचुरल मॉस्किटो रिपेलेंट लेमन ग्रास ये तो सबको पता होना चाहिए सी लेमन सी वी आर अ ट्रॉपिकल कंट्री एंड ऑलमोस्ट हाफ ऑफ द ईयर सिक्स मंथ्स ऑफ द ईयर वी आर डीलिंग विद मॉस्किटोज इधर डेंगी चिकनगुनिया और अदर वेक्टर बॉन्ड डिजीजेस सो दिस इज फ्रीक्वेंटली सीन इन न्यूज एज टू वॉट आर द नेचुरल रेमेडीज ऑफ रिपेलिंग मॉस्किटोज सो पीपल टेल जो आते हैं ना लाइफ स्टाइल टाइप के कि डू दिस डू दैट अप्लाई यू क्लिप्टस ऑयल एंड ऑल सो समटाइम्स दिस इज ऑल्सो मैंशन दैट ग्रो लेमन ग्रास अराउंड योर हाउस इट विल रिपेल मॉस्किटोज ओके नाउ another plant based question recently there was a growing awareness in our country about the importance of himalayan nettle and uska scientific name is given because it is found to be a sustainable source of anti malarial drug biodiesel or pulp or paper or textile the answer as you can see is textile again down to earth Khars experimentation with Himalayan nettle brings recognition. Himalayan nettle, a fiber yielding plant, has become an important livelihood option for people living in the mountainous villages of Hindu Kush Himalayas. Now tell me why should I not recommend down to earth? I'm showing you one example after another. This is important because बहुत कम ऐसे organizations हैं या magazines हैं जो इतना फ्रीक्वेंट लेवल पे हु आर डूइंग बेस वर्क ऑन द ग्राउंड एंड गेटिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इन द कंट्री रिलेटेड टू एनवायरनमेंट इन केस यू डोंट नो डाउन टू अर्थ इज अ पब्लिकेशन ऑफ सेंटर फॉर साइंस एंड एनवायरनमेंट ओके सेंटर फॉर साइंस एंड एनवायरनमेंट व्हिच इज रन बाय सुनीता नारायण दिस इज अ इट इज एन एन बट इट इज एन एन जी वर्क्स इन वेरी क्लोज कोलेबोरेशन विद द गवर्नमेंट ओके एंड इट्स वन ऑफ द लीडिंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन so and the information that you get here is up to date which is why it is extremely important theek hai it's a very prestigious organization okay next which of the following are nitrogen fixing plants bahut sare ncert mein hai kuch nahi bhi hai alpha alpha amaranth chickpea clover kulfa spinach eliminate karna tha you just had to eliminate a few what are leguminous plants leguminous plants are nitrogen fixing plants how do they work kaise work karta hai <coughs> leguminous plants are those plants jinki roots mein aise balls balls si ban jati hain jagah jagah and these balls that is the root nodules of leguminous plants in balls ke andar rehte hain certain bacteria and these bacterias are responsible for fixing atmospheric nitrogen into into absorbable form okay it can be absorbed of course there are other free living bacteria also which stay in the soil which can do the same job but there are certain bacterias which only do it with the in symbiotic association with this plants leguminous plants and the question is asking you about what are the leguminous plants some names are mentioned in ncert some are not but still this is a very basic question okay examples of leguminous plants all right okay next question now taxonomy related question very tough 
don't expect you to answer but now that upsc has asked now i expect you to know okay for the coming attempt so copepods cyanobacteria die atoms foraminifera okay foraminifera sorry foraminifera which of the following are primary producers in the food chain simple question hai naam waise hai anybody who has studied biology in class 11 12 will be able to answer this question okay i showed you the chapters plant as a classification animal biological kingdom classification agar kisi ne wo ncert ke chapters bhi padhe hain you will be able to answer this question all you need to know is which of these are heterotrophs and which of these are autotrophs okay that means kaun se aise hain jo sunlight ko use karke khana banate hain aur kaun se aise hain which feed on other organisms okay now let's take a look these are copepods are tiny crustacean zooplankton when zooplankton means animals phytoplankton means plants okay so these look like this okay then there is cyanobacteria cyanobacteria is known as blue green algae they perform oxygenic photosynthesis and also fix atmospheric nitrogen in fact cyanobacteria is one of the first living organisms that has evolved in the course of earth's evolutionary history pani mein jo first organism hum kehte hain na ki which came into being with lot of complex organic molecules coming together that was cyanobacteria which is blue green algae okay so ye aana tha ye to bilkul aana tha all right and this is taught to you in geography also sometimes when you are covering ki how life evolved diatoms are again algae so where you get algae they are producers that live in houses made of glass this is their characteristic okay they are the only organism on the planet which have cell walls composed of composed of transparent silica so their cell walls are transparent in nature this is what diatoms look like okay and yes they are producers okay now forams or foraminifera okay they are commonly called marine creatures they are not animals they are not but also they are not animals they lack not only a number of animal characteristics but also photosynthetic capabilities of organisms such as plants or algae to na ye pure animal hai na ye pure plant hai okay so this that's why i am saying this question is tough but if you had read ncert basic chapters all these terms are covered okay diatoms foraminifera uh, copepods all these terms are covered in the taxonomic classification tough question but for those with a background because forest service ke liye apply karte hain people with botany and zoology background also and this is to help them theek hai all right chalo another basic question again eating habit which of the following are detritivores what are detritivores how are they different from decomposers detritivores directly eat dead plants and animals and decomposers first break them down into nutrients and then consume the nutrients okay this is the difference between detritivores and decomposers so the question is asking you which of these are detritivores earthworm sabko pata hai jellyfish you know yeah sea horse what is a sea horse it's a fish what does it look like write down write down the names of all this the ironical part is naam uska sea horse hai but it is one of the slowest creatures in the so slowest fish in the it's not a fish per se it looks like a horse only uski shakal waisi hippocampus bolte hain usko but sea horse it is one of the slowest creatures and ironically naam uska sea horse hai that's because it looks like a horse not because it runs like a horse okay and wood lice is it a parasite wood lice what is lice generally juwe <laughs> yes juwe pad jati hai na sir mein that is lice so what is wood lice 
जो वुड में पड़ जाती है बट इट इज नॉट अ पैरासाइट वुड लाइफ इज नॉट अ पैरासाइट अब ये सब नाम लिखो और इन सब के बारे में पढ़ना है दिस अगर प्रीवियस ईयर करे और ये एक्सरसाइज नहीं की देन इट्स अ टोटल वेस्ट आंसर की पढ़नी थी तो वो तो घर पे पेजेस फ्लिप करके भी पढ़ सकते थे ठीक है दिस एक्सरसाइज हैज टू बी डन सो दैट यू कैन बिल्ड ऑन दिस क्लास फर्दर ऑल राइट डेटरेटिव वॉज एंड दिस इज डन ओके अनादर बेसिक क्वेश्चन डायरेक्ट लिफ्ट फ्रॉम एन In case of which one of the following biogeochemical cycles, the weathering of rocks is the main source of release of nutrient to enter the cycle. Which has the weathering of rocks is the main source of phosphorus cycles. So, ये कहाँ लिखा है? The natural. This is a snippet from NCERT. The natural reservoir of phosphorus is rock, which contains phosphorus in the form of phosphates. when rocks are weathered minute amounts of these phosphates dissolve in soil solution and are absorbed by the roots of the plants is directly given from in, in ncert theek hai again that is why ncert as a source was also given to you okay those ecology chapters these are low hanging fruits ye karne hai ye isme galti nahi honi chahiye theek hai yeah agriculture Shall we start? <coughs> start reading this question. Okay, like I told you, uh, agriculture. My questions are related to latest technologies in agriculture. How new things are coming up to make more climate friendly practices. So see this question with reference to the circumstances. Whatever the concept of conservation agriculture, which of the following fall under conservation? एग्रीकल्चर सो कंजर्वेशन एग्रीकल्चर सेज कि बहुत ज्यादा छेड़छाड़ मत करो लेट इट कंजर्व द वे इट इज द नॉर्मल वे द यू नो फार्मिंग वुड टेक प्लेस और नॉर्मल एग्रीकल्चर डोंट डिसरप्ट टू मच सो इट टॉक्स अबाउट अडॉप्टिंग मिनिमम टिलेज वॉट इज टिलेज फ्लोइंग करना जब आपने क्रॉप हार्वेस्ट कर लिया उसके बाद आपके पास सॉइल बच जाती है तो आप उसको खूब खुद गुडाई करते हो विच इज गुडाई यू अंडरस्टैंड राइट सो यू प्लो इट सो दैट देर इज मिक्सिंग ऑफ सॉइल एंड एरेशन बट वॉट हैपन्स बिकॉज ऑफ दैट इज अ लॉट ऑफ द रेजिड्यू दैट इज इन द सॉइल गेट्स अपरूटेड ओके देर इज एरेशन इट इज अ गुड थिंग ऑल्सो बट समटाइम्स इट कैन बी काउंटर प्रोडक्टिव सो इट सेज कि जो है ना जैसा है वैसे ही रहने दो उसको बहुत ज़्यादा टिलेज मत करो ओके अवॉइडिंग द कल्टिवेशन ऑफ प्लांटेशन क्रॉप्स the conservation agriculture does not really talks about plantation crops it says using crop residue to cover soil surface that is mulching it promotes mulching that means there is a soil okay soil ka level hai uske upar aapne crop residue jo hai usko ya to wahi chhod diya ya fir aapne last mein jo chote chote shoots bachte hain aapne upar se to kaat liya let's say gehu kaat liya rice kaat liya but jo uska niche ka wo part reh gaya you have left it as it is so that will ultimately decompose and provide nutrition for further crops okay so it says use the crop residue to cover soil surface and adapt adopting spatial and temporal crop sequencing or crop rotation so that the natural fertility of the soil remains so for example rotate with leguminous crops wheat and all other leguminous crops fix nitrogen सो जो नाइट्रोजन की अदरवाइज कमी होगी इन सॉइल विल बी फुलफिल्ड बाय द नेक्स्ट क्रॉप ओके आइडियली दिस शुड हैव आल्सो बीन यस अवॉइडिंग मोनोकल्चरल प्रैक्टिसेस बिकॉज दिस एंड दिस आर कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री टू ईच अदर बट द आंसर की डज नॉट अलाउ अस टू सिलेक्ट दिस कॉम्बिनेशन सो अल्टीमेटली द आंसर वुड बी सी यू में ऐसा बहुत होता है कि कई बार आपको लगता है यार ये भी है ये भी है लेकिन ये कोई भी आंसर की मैच नहीं कर रही है जो सब में विच यू थिंक आर राइट इन सच अ सिनारियो जस्ट पिक व्हाट इज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट एंड मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ कंजर्वेशन एग्रीकल्चर इज मिनिमम टिलेज एंड यूजिंग क्रॉप रेजिड्यू फॉर सॉइल कवरिंग मिनिमम टिलेज मीन्स यू डोंट डिसरप्ट द सॉइल एंड इट्स नेचर यू नो जितना आप उसको टिल करोगे आप जितना वो करोगे यू विल डिस्ट्रॉय द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द सॉइल दैट इज वाई ओके 
another question on agriculture now this is related to some particular uh, uh, initiative global initiative so this says this question was asked in 2017 or 18 okay it says global alliance for climate smart agriculture is an outcome of this summit held in paris in 2015 no this is not correct this summit was held in 2010 and it was organized by fao and question was asked in 1718 18. so no reason for you to feel ki question nahi pooch sakte they can ask question okay membership does not create any binding obligations this is correct no binding obligation that members have to do this or that aisa kuch nahi hai and india was instrumental in the creation of this particular alliance no india is a member is a signatory but it has nothing to do with the creation of this again i told you names of initiatives names of bodies jo shayad kisi article mein kahi beech mein ek mentioned hogi upsc will ask question on that and this is an example of that okay global global alliance for climate smart agriculture was mentioned in a few articles in that span of last one year somewhere here and there all right okay again agriculture new technology that is system of rice intensification how is it different from normal conventional rice cultivation now system of rice intensification means normal rice cultivation mein kya hota hai seeds are spread in a lot of water which is inundated yani ki field mein pura pani bhara hoga aur seeds spread karke wahan pe grow kiye jate hain right now in this particular thing dekho the seeds the rice requires a lot of water but it does not require completely inundated conditions it does not require ki pani bhara hi ho hamesha because the more the water is the rice will have to make extra effort to catch air okay rice ki aadhi energy na wo aeration ke liye apne wo nodules banane mein hi nikal jati hai because of that so it was realized that in order to you know make it easier for the rice crop we should have continuous irrigation alternate periods of drying and wetting but continuous inundation is not required proper pani bhara hua hona zaruri nahi hai you need alternate periods of drying and wetting and that gives also good results the only thing is with system of rice intensification normally jo seeds bahut zyada closely who are you know transplanted the plants are put there very closely in this particular system they are spaced they are well spaced okay so for example in your conventional method if you see the spacing between two plants is somewhere 15 to 10 cm but in system of rice intensification it is 25 into 25 cm that means spacing dur hai again number of plants per acre if you see kitne honge this is around 79 792000 but here in this it will be 64000 roughly seed requirement per acre in a conventional method will be 20 kg but under system of rice intensification it will be 2 kg only okay so why people are not following it is obviously because jitne kam seeds honge to shayad yield bhi utna kam hoga that means output itna kam hoga okay but anyway irrespective of that fact it has been realized that this system of cultivation which has alternate wetting and drying results in so what are the answers it has reduced seed requirement there is reduced methane production जितना पानी वाटर लॉक्ड कंडीशंस होंगे उतना मीथेन प्रोड्यूस होगा तो मीथेन नहीं प्रोड्यूस होगा एंड रिड्यूस्ड इलेक्ट्रिसिटी कंजम्पशन द मोर यू वांट वाटर फॉर इरिगेशन द मोर इलेक्ट्रिसिटी वी यू विल यूज फॉर पंप्स टू ड्रॉ वाटर एंड दैट विल आल्सो बी रिड्यूस्ड सो द आंसर इज वन टू एंड थ्री ओके नाउ कमिंग टू दिस परमा कल्चर फार्मिंग हाउ इज इट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम कन्वेंशनल फार्मिंग i told you questions in agriculture are related to new technologies happening in agriculture and comparing that with the conventional method okay so permaculture farming discourages monocultural practices but in conventional chemical farming monocultural practices are predominant this is correct 
कन्वेंशनली हम उसी खेत पे गेहूँ उगाए जा रहे हैं चावल उगाए जा रहे हैं और उसमें और केमिकल डाले जा रहे हैं बट परमा कल्चर डज नॉट से परमा कल्चर टॉक्स अबाउट द थ्री प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ परमा कल्चर आर यू प्रोटेक्ट अर्थ यू प्रोटेक्ट पीपल एंड देर इज प्रॉपर बेनिफिट शेयरिंग दैट मीन्स बोथ द फार्मर एंड द कंज्यूमर आर बेनिफिटेड ओके प्रोटेक्ट अर्थ प्रोटेक्ट पीपल एंड बेनिफिट शेयरिंग दीज आर द थ्री प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ परमा कल्चर ओके सो कन्वेंशनल फार्मिंग कैन इंक्रीज इन सॉइल सैलिनिटी बट अकरेंस ऑफ सच फिनोमिन इज नॉट ऑब्जर्वड इन परमा कल्चर सो एवरी थिंग विल बी गुड अबाउट परमा कल्चर ओके बट द ट्रैप इज केमिकल फार्मिंग इज इजिली पॉसिबल इन सेमी एड एरियाज बट परमा कल्चर इज नॉट पॉसिबल इन सच रीजन्स ऐसा नहीं है इट इज पॉसिबल इन सेमी एरिड एरियाज ऑल्सो ओके वाई सेमी एरिड बहुत ज़्यादा इरीगेशन भी डिमांड नहीं करेगा ये ओके सो इट कैन बी डन इन सेमी एरिड एरियाज ऑल्सो एंड प्रैक्टिस ऑफ मल्चिंग आई जस्ट टोल्ड यू वॉट इज मल्चिंग पुटिंग द क्रॉप रेजिड्यूज का एक लेयर सॉइल के ऊपर बना देते हैं सो दैट सॉइल इरोजन भी ना हो ठीक है न्यूट्रियस गो बैक इन टू द सॉइल एंड सोन एंड सो फोर्थ मल्चिंग इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बट नॉट नेसेसरी इन केमिकल कन्वेंशनल फार्मिंग गॉड इट ओके लेट्स और दिस इज द सिस्टम ऑफ राइस इंटेंसिफिकेशन Seeds get transplanted at a much younger stage. Only single seedlet or a handful of seedlings get plants pl uh, planted. Plants are spaced apart in wider pattern. Intermittent water to create dry and wet soil conditions. Okay, and rotary weeding. That means a little bit of weeding is done and improve aeration. And finally, there is increased use of organic soil fertilizers. So this is system of rice intensification. क्लियर इस पर क्वेश्चन आते हैं काफ़ी टेस्ट सीरीज में भी आते हैं और यू पी एस सी में भी आते हैं दिस इज वन ऑफ द फेवरेट टॉपिक्स ऑल राइट नाउ अगेन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर कंसिडर्ड इको फ्रेंडली एग्रीकल्चरल प्रैक्टिस क्रॉप डाइवर्सिफिकेशन इज इको फ्रेंडली बाय क्योंकि हम बीच में मान लो पल्सेस ग्रो कर रहे हैं बीच में व्हीट ग्रो ग्रो कर रहे हैं पल्सेस आर लेग्यूमिनस प्लांट्स विच विल फिक्स नाइट्रोजन एंड पुट इट इनटू द सॉइल एंड हमें ऊपर से यूरिया नहीं डालना पड़ेगा ओके सो दैट लेग्यूम इंटेंसिफिकेशन लाइक आई जस्ट टोल्ड यू पल्सेस एंड लेग्यूमिनस प्लांट्स ओके टेंसीटर यूज वॉट इज टेंसीटर बोलो बोलो जोर से बोलो स्पीड ऑफ विंड नहीं टेंसीटर इज अ डिवाइस विच मेजर्स द टेंशन इन द वॉटर टेंशन इन द सॉइल दैट मीन्स द अमाउंट ऑफ फोर्स द प्लांट विल हैव टू अप्लाई टू अब्जॉर्ब वॉटर थ्रू इट्स रूट्स दैट फोर्स और दैट टेंशन इज मेजर थ्रू टेंसीटर तो जितना ज्यादा अच्छा इरीगेटेड प्लांट का सॉइल सिस्टम होगा उतना उसको टेंशन कम लगाना पड़ेगा जितना पुअरली इरीगेटेड होगा उतना उसका टेंशन ज़्यादा होगा ओके सो टेंसीटर यूज विल हेल्प एंड वर्टिकल फार्मिंग वॉट इज वर्टिकल फार्मिंग नॉट रियली वर्टिकल फार्मिंग इज अ प्रैक्टिस इन विच आर्टिफिशियली सपोज फॉर एग्जाम्पल मैंने यहाँ पे चार शेल्व बनाई ओके एंड इन दो शेल्व आई एम ग्रोइंग प्लांट्स इन पॉट्स ओके दैट इज वर्टिकल फार्मिंग दैट मीन्स अदरवाइज जो प्लांट्स मुझे ऐसे लैंड पे उगाने पड़ते इन प्लेस ऑफ दैट आई हैव ग्रोन देम लाइक दिस इन अ वर्टिकल फॉर्मैट आर्टिफिशियली इन पॉट्स दैट इज वर्टिकल फार्मिंग सो वर्टिकल फार्मिंग इज इट अ इको फ्रेंडली एग्रीकल्चर no it requires a lot of infrastructure it requires a lot of energy and water to keep that system going all right so vertical farming is not considered very eco friendly all right okay among the following crops which one of the following is the most important anthropogenic source of methane and nitrous oxide abhi padha hai maine rice the more water clogged conditions the more production of methane and nitrous oxide again zero tillage agriculture what are its advantages 
Sowing of wheat is possible without burning the residue of the previous crop. I just told you this. कि ऊपर से कट कर दिया लेकिन जो लास्ट में जो उसका बचा है जैसे हम पराली जलाना है ऑल दैट इज गोइंग ऑन राइट स्टबल बर्निंग वो जो लास्ट में बच जाता है दैट इज केप्ट इंटैक्ट विदाउट द नीड फॉर नर्सरी ऑफ राइस सैपलिंग्स डायरेक्ट प्लांटिंग ऑफ पैडी सीड्स इन द वेट सॉइल इज पॉसिबल वी जस्ट सॉ इट ओके नाउ कार्बन सिक्वेस्ट्रेशन इन द सॉइल इज पॉसिबल बिकॉज आपने जो क्रॉप रेजिड्यू बचा फॉर एग्जाम्पल देर वॉज अ लॉट ऑफ लास्ट लास्ट की स्टेम्स बची थी आपने ऊपर से गेहूं काट ली स्टेम्स बची हैं अब या तो आप वो स्टेम्स जलाओ ठीक है जैसे जैसे हम नॉर्मल स्टबल बर्निंग कहते हैं इफ यू आर बर्निंग दैट तो जो स्टेम्स में कार्बन है यू आर एमिटिंग दैट वो कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड के फॉर्म में रिलीज हो रहा है बट इफ यू आर नॉट बर्निंग दैट इफ यू आर पुटिंग इट इन द जीरो टिलेज इफ यू आर कीपिंग इट इन द सॉइल इट सेल्फ दैट कार्बन इज प्रिवेंटेड फ्रॉम गोइंग इन टू द एटमोस्फेयर सो यू आर सीक्वेस्टरिंग कार्बन अंडरस्टूड ओके नाउ फर्टिगेशन अगेन न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी आई टोल्ड यू एग्रीकल्चर इज देर ऑल क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू लेटेस्ट टेक्नोलॉजीज इन एग्रीकल्चर अगेन सोर्स फॉर दिस इज न्यूज पेपर्स एंड डाउन टू अर्थ मैगजीन उसमें लेटेस्ट जो भी आता है दैट इज कवर्ड ओके ओके नाउ फर्टिगेशन मीन्स वॉट इज फर्टिलाइजर एंड वॉट इज इरीगेशन सो मिक्सिंग फर्टिलाइजर विद वॉटर यानी कि आपने एक पाइप सिस्टम कनेक्ट किया उसी पाइप में से आप पानी दे रहे हो और पानी में ही आपने फर्टिलाइजर घोल दिया है सो दैट इज फर्टिगेशन तो आपको अलग से फर्टिलाइजर नहीं डालना है अलग से पानी नहीं डालना है वन कॉमन सिस्टम यू आर कीपिंग द टूगेदर ओके सो कंट्रोलिंग द एल्कलिनिटी ऑफ इरीगेशन of water is possible so if your water you can decide usme kitna salts rahega kitna rahega you can control the ph of the water through that fertilizer okay efficient application of rock phosphate and other phosphatic fertilizers is possible this is not correct most of the phosphates are not water soluble That is why phosphate minerals fertilizers you cannot do through fertigation because obviously पानी में आप वही चीज भेज सकते हो जो पानी में डिजोल्व हो जाए ओके देर विल बी इंक्रीज अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ न्यूट्रियस येस एंड देर विल बी रिडक्शन इन लीचिंग ऑफ केमिकल न्यूट्रियस बिकॉज यू विल गिव अ सर्टन अमाउंट थ्रू वॉटर इट सेल्फ एंड दैट विल बी अब्जॉर्ब सोनर एज अपोज टू स्प्रेइंग अ लॉट ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर विच अल्टीमेटली गेट्स लीच इन टू द सॉइल वॉट इज लीचिंग इट फाइनली नीचे परकुलेट होके यार ड्रेन अवे ओके इट गेट्स फर्दर डाउन ऑल राइट सो आंसर इज वन थ्री एंड फोर ओके अगेन सिमिलर नाम दिए हैं दी वर दे दीज वर इन न्यूज एंड दे आर वॉट दे आर पेस्टिसाइड ओके नाउ सी दिस दिस इज ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री क्वेश्चन it says recirculating aquaculture system again something different basically jab aap fish grow kar rahe ho ek let's say pond mein ya tank mein for aquaculture purposes aapko wo tank ka pani bar bar change karna padega you might have aquarium some of you might have aquariums at home so you know you have to change the water every few days why because fish ek to nutrition khatam ho jata hai and then fish is लीव्स अ लॉट ऑफ वेस्ट इन टू द वॉटर ठीक है वो बहुत ज्यादा वेस्ट उसमें एक्सपेल करती है एंड दैट वॉटर बिकम्स हजार फॉर द फिश एंड यू हैव टू चेंज दैट नाउ रिसर्कुलेटिंग एक्वाकल्चर सिस्टम मीन्स अ सिस्टम इन विच द वॉटर इज रिसर्कुलेटेड ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम रेगुलरली सो दैट आपको बार बार फिश को और पानी को चेंज ना करना पड़े यू आर जस्ट पुटिंग इट थ्रू सर्टन सिस्टम दैट इज गिविंग बैक फ्रेश वॉटर टू द फिश ओके now that filtering or cleaning of water is done through something known as biofilters biofilter means filter kya hota hai ek device channi jaisa jisme se pass ho raha hai pani biofilter means it is made of microorganisms so there is a substrate on which certain microorganisms are living bacteria okay these bacteria are good at converting ammonia to nitrates and nitrites okay so when the water is passed through these biofilters the ammonia gradually gets converted into nitrates and nitrites nitrates are also toxic to fish but nitrites are okay 
all right so this is where the बायो फिल्टर्स आर लोकेटेड अफकोर्स डिस इन्फेक्शन ऑफ वाटर डी गैसिंग यानी वाटर में जो कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इकट्ठी हो गई है उसको हटाना ऑल दी स्टेप्स आर ऑल्सो डन बट द क्वेश्चन इज रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू बायो फिल्टर्स सो लेट सी द क्वेश्चन इट्स इज बायो फिल्टर्स प्रोवाइड वेस्ट ट्रीटमेंट बाई रिमूविंग अन ईटन फिश फीड ऑब्वियसली जो फिश फीड आप ऊपर से डालते हो सम ऑफ यू हु हैव अक्वेरियम्स माइट नो दैट फिश फीड इज रिमूव बायो फिल्टर्स कन्वर्ट अमोनिया प्रेजेंट इन टू present in fish waste into nitrate this is correct bio filters increase phosphorus as nutrient for fish in water no why will they increase phosphorus phosphorus has to be also removed okay so bio filters has nothing to do with increasing something so the question only required you to understand that what is bio filter as a concept और कहीं आर्टिकल में कवर हुआ था इन न्यूज़ सम आर्टिकल्स वर देयर रिगार्डिंग दिस एक्वाकल्चर सिस्टम एंड अ ब्रीफ मेंशन वाज अबाउट बायो फिल्टर्स एंड यू जस्ट हैड टू एलिमिनेट दिस ऑप्शन बाकी दोनों तो वैसे ही बहुत इजी हैं सो व्हाट सीमिंगली इज अ टफ क्वेश्चन वुड हैव बीन एन ईजी क्वेश्चन फॉर सम वन हैज रेड द न्यूज पेपर्स ओके ऑल राइट एलगे बेस्ड बायोफ्यूल्स algae based biofuels okay so algae based biofuels kya hota hai so for example algae hai algae like i told you is autotrophs okay they use sunlight to produce energy and algae is harvested it is dewatered that means uske andar ka jo pani hai it is removed oil is extracted algal oil then some of it is fermented the oil is converted into biodiesel and algae is converted into bioethanol and this is how it looks like in real life all right now let's see the question production of algae based biofuels is possible in seas only and not on continents why not of course it can be okay so this statement is wrong setting up and engineering the algae based biofuel production requires high level of expertise technology until the construction is completed yes the process requires skill and technology economically viable production necessitates the setting up of large scale facilities which may raise ecological and social concerns so itna se algae mein se agar tel nikalna hai you need a mass production of this particular commodity and entity right and it has to be done at a massive scale for you to have some commercially viable quantities and that is what the question is asking okay clear chalo next topic climate change and mitigation uh if someone is listening to me from the back end please send t if possible <laughs> okay we koi hai nahi classroom mein so i'm just saying it <coughs> i'll try to finish as fast as possible i don't want to stretch it to another class because this is just a class to gain an idea of द डायरेक्शन इन विच योर प्रेपरेशन शुड गो डायरेक्शन में चलना आपको ही है ऑल राइट ओके लेट स्टार्ट इन द कंटेक्सट ऑफ मिटिगेटिंग एन इम्पेंडिंग ग्लोबल वार्मिंग ड्यू टू एंथ्रोपोजेनिक एमिशन ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कैन बी द पोटेंशियल साइट फॉर कार्बन सिक्वेस्ट्रेशन That means which of these sites? What is carbon sequestration? अभी मैंने बताया था. You are preventing the carbon, or you are capturing the carbon and putting it back in some form where it is not emitted to the atmosphere. आप उसको atmosphere में नहीं जाने दे रहे. Because वहीं पे global warming हो रही है, right? Okay. So answer is all are correct. Okay. And these te technologies have been tested. This was in 2017. abandoned and uneconomic coal seams okay so carbon can be captured and carbon dioxide can be captured and put in these jo already jahan se koila mine ho chuka hai aisi jagahon pe unko rakh ke band kar sakte hain okay depleted oil and gas reserves similar concept and subterranean deep saline formation same concept okay if you want to know what this is note it down and see the diagram subterranean deep saline formations best is 
रीड अ पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल चाहे विकीपीडिया ही पढ़ लो ऑल्दो वी डोंट रिकमेंड विकीपीडिया इट्स नॉट वेरी ऑथेंटिक बट वॉट आर द डिफरेंट टेक्नोलॉजीज ऑफ कार्बन सिक्वेस्ट्रेशन प्लीज नोट दिस क्वेश्चन डाउन एंड फाइंड आंसर्स टू दिस वॉट आर द डिफरेंट टेक्नोलॉजीज ऑफ कार्बन सिक्वेस्ट्रेशन दिस इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्चुअल टॉपिक डन ओके नाउ 2019 question in the context of which of the following do some scientists suggest the use of cirrus cloud thinning technique and injection of sulfate aerosol into the stratosphere i told you climate change technology related questions are being asked ki kaise karna hai okay jo theory hai uski ki itna temperature badh gaya itna hame rokna hai itna emissions hai paris agreement hai ye wo that is for mains prelims is focusing on technologies all right so what is cirrus cloud non non rainy okay any other feature uppermost very good at the highest altitude so kai bari when a sky is very clear if you look up you know deep into the sky you will see very feather like small small clouds cool feathery feathery aisa bahut proper aisa cotton ball nahi lagta it looks like a feathery small spread over those are cirrus clouds and they are at the highest altitude okay so this particular cloud thinning technique what it does is it re, it uh, allows injection of certain ice crystals around this place so for example a plane went plane gaya and it injected certain ice crystals so jo clouds hain unko disperse ya break down kar deta hai okay and because of the breakdown the cirrus clouds break away they are thinning right thinning of cirrus clouds takes place and this is done to how does it help in preventing global warming because the long wave radiation that earth emits back into the atmosphere which is usually trapped for greenhouse gases goes straight to the atmosphere like exosphere okay is straight expelled so wo trap nahi hoti hai that trapping stops yes somebody was listening to me <laughs> okay and injection of sulfate aerosol into stratosphere what is this thank you <laughs> sulfate aerosol clouds kaise bante hain hai eh? condensation hota hai that's right so condensation ke liye kya chahiye aise hi condensation kar do you need a nuclei right you need a particle or a nuclei around which condensation can take place and clouds can form so this particular aerosol sulfate aerosols what they do is they create particles and thus because of this it causes rain and thus helps in tackling with global warming okay so the answer is reducing global warming this was one of the easier questions because options itne uh, vast hai varied hai and just you had to know a few concepts ki bhai nuclei hai and stratospheric injection okay cloud seeding mein kya hota hai same concept okay can you tell me the name of some of the substances that are used in cloud seeding silver iodide very good or dry ice okay or so amon write this down what are some of the substances that can be used for cloud seeding for creating or condensation of nuclei in cloud seeding or what can be injected in the atmosphere for cloud seeding okay <coughs> methane hydrate okay global warming might trigger the release of methane gas from these deposits so methane hydrates look like this ye ice hai okay permanently deposited ice 
this captures some of the methane okay so this is what a methane hydrate looks like if you see these are water molecules and usi ke sath intertwined are the gas molecules all right this is how methane is captured so methane hydrate so global warming so there will be if there is global warming this permanent ice will mess, melt permafrost permafrost is the layer of ice beneath the soil in tundra and taiga regions taiga region specifically it will melt and that will further release methane which will further cause more global warming okay so it is a positive feedback loop so global warming might trigger the release of methane gas from these deposits large deposits of methane hydrate are found in the arctic tundra and under the sea floor this is correct okay methane in atmosphere oxidizes to carbon dioxide after a decade or two so methane actually does it does what is a life so all these gases have a specific life so carbon dioxide stays for a longest time methane then other global greenhouse gases you will get to learn in the course of your preparation everybody teaches that what is the global warming potential of these gases and what is the life of these okay so this was a relatively okay question jisne bilkul hi nahi padha methane hydrate could not answer but somebody who just knew the concept also the qu uh, statements are pretty straightforward all right this is 2019 chalo next what is blue carbon it is a short and sweet question hai <laughs> mind you mains also upsc has asked started asking direct questions what is this how is that ये नहीं कि डिस्कस इन द लाइट ऑफ द अब वैसे भी आते हैं बट इट हैज स्टार्टेड आस्किंग डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन नाउ ओके सो वॉट इज ब्लू कार्बन कार्बन कैप्चर्ड बाय ओशन एंड कोस्टल इको सिस्टम दिस इज ईजी ऑल राइट बायो रॉक टेक्नोलॉजी इज टॉक्ट अबाउट इन विच वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग सिचुएशन वॉट इज द आंसर अब तो आंसर तो वहाँ आती है और आई एल टेल यू सो बायो रॉक टेक्नोलॉजी बीन्स बेसिकली मीन्स जो कोरल रीफ डैमेज हो गए हैं उनको रीबिल्ड करता है इट लुक्स लाइक दिस सी दे विल पुट अ स्ट्रक्चर ये ऐसा स्ट्रक्चर है ओके दिस स्ट्रक्चर ठीक है एंड इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इज सप्लाइड टू इट ओके सो इट विल अट्रैक्ट द ग्रोथ ऑफ कोरल्स एंड फाइनली वॉट कोरल्स हैव बीन डिस्ट्रॉयड थ्रू बायोरेक टेक्नोलॉजी विल रीग्रो in india where has this technology been applied have i written here no ha huh? find out likho kaha bola aapne kashmir lakshadweep mein kya kashmir mein corals nahi nahi likho i think the answer is kach kach hai theek hai so how the electric current helps when a positively charged anode and a negatively charged cathode are suspended in sea water the current is flowing between them calcium ion combine with uh, carbonate ions and creates calcium carbonate okay and finally when this calcium carbonate jab ban jata hai coral fragments then it is inhabited by corals are a symbiotic relationship between and zooxanthellae okay so then it promotes growth of that all right clear done miyawaki method this was a very easy question miyawaki was in news in tons of articles everybody solved this the answer is ha huh, creation of mini forest in urban areas ओके मिया वाकी मीन्स लोगों के बैक यार्ड में हु हैड सम स्पेसेज नॉट वेरी स्मॉल बट लार्ज इनफ टू क्रिएट अ फॉरेस्ट दे ग्रो फॉरेस्ट इन अर्बन स्पेसेस एंड अलाउड द ग्रोथ ऑफ प्लांट्स इन अ नेचुरल फॉर्म तो कोई भी कोई भी स्पीशीज कैसी भी हो रही है तो वो जंगल बना दिए एंड दैट टेक्निक इज मिया वाकी ओके द मिया वाकी कॉन्सेप्ट कम्स फ्रॉम जपैन दिस इज अ जैपनीज टर्म ओके वी टॉक अबाउट कार्बन सिक्वेस्ट्रेशन सेम कॉन्सेप्ट 2023 ओके पहले आया कि कहाँ कहाँ हो सकता है अब क्वेश्चन आया स्प्रेडिंग फाइनली ग्राउंड बसाल्ट रॉक ऑन फार्म लैंड एक्सटेंसिवली इंक्रीजिंग द एल्कलिनिटी ऑफ ओशंस बाय एडिंग लाइम 
and capturing carbon dioxide released by various industries and pumping into abandoned subterranean mines in the form of carbonated waters which of the following are often considered and discussed as techniques for carbon capture and sequestration what is the answer c to hai c to abhi padha humne theek hai subterranean mines mein capturing carbon dioxide and putting in there ye bhi hai if you are increasing the alkalinity co2 increases the acidity of oceans ocean acidification sabne suna hoga okay so if you increase the alkalinity the oceans will be in a better capacity to absorb more carbon dioxide so yes and first is also correct dekha theme repeat hui na this is why i told you to write the question that what are the different techniques of carbon sequestration ho sakta hai agle saal चार और नई टेक्निक पूछ ले ठीक है क्लियर ओके ओह दिस इज आर टफ क्वेश्चन एनीवे इसके लिए तो मुझे चाय पीनी पड़ेगी क्वेश्चन पढ़ लो तब तक I need the pen for this. What are carbon markets? Carbon stock exchange, not bad. Or, hmm? Carbon trading. What is carbon trading? Can you give me carbon dioxide? Then what is carbon trading? Carbon trading. Carbon trading. चलो कुछ कुछ तो बताए ठीक है ओके नेक्स्ट पेज से करते हैं दिस इज वॉट अ कार्बन मार्केट लुक्स लाइक ओके सो द थिंग इज नॉर्मल दुनिया चल रही है देर आर नो गवर्नमेंट्स मान लो नथिंग नो गवर्नमेंट पॉलिसी ठीक है इंडस्ट्रीज आर वर्किंग दे आर बिल्डिंग प्रोडक्ट्स एंड दे आर एमिटिंग कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड ठीक है there is one industry or factory a and then there is a factory b this is the amount of co2 it is emitting kisi ko koi farak nahi pad raha hai theek hai jisko jo karna hai karo enter government government says ki aap ek limit tak hi co2 emit kar sakte ho maan lo government ne limit yahan set ki ओके okay? गवर्नमेंट ने यहाँ लिमिट सेट की कि हर इन फैक्ट्री इस टाइप की जो है जो इस टाइप के प्रोडक्ट्स बना सकती है इतनी ही सी ओ टू एमिट कर सकती है बी ने अपना टारगेट अचीव किया हैज बी अचीव्ड इट्स टारगेट नो नहीं हाँ इट हैज नॉट अचीव सो इट हैज एक्सीडेड इट्स सी ओ टू मैंडेट ए ने उसके अंडर अंडर में ही अपना काम कर लिया सी का ठीक है नाउ वॉट इज हैपनिंग इज बिकॉज ऑफ दिस स्ट्रक्चर बिकॉज गवर्नमेंट्स आर गिविंग अ गाइडलाइन दैट देर इज अ प्रॉपर प्रोविजन बिकॉज ऑफ दिस सम वन इज डूइंग वेल एंड सम वन इज नॉट डूइंग वेल नाउ ए इज टेलिंग बी कि यार मैंने ना लिमिट से इतना कम किया है ओके ए इज टेलिंग लेट से द गवर्नमेंट आई हैव इतना मैंने कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड बचा लिया जो और एटमोसफेयर में जा सकता था बी इज टेलिंग यार इतना ही मैंने एक्सेस में कर दिया सो ए इज सेंग ओके लेट मी सेल माय कार्बन क्रेडिट टू यू दैट मींस आई हैव सेव्ड आई हैड द मैंडेट कि मैं इतना कर सकता हूँ सो आई हैव अर्नड समथिंग कॉल्ड द कार्बन क्रेडिट एंड लेट मी गिव दैट क्रेडिट टू यू सो वॉट वॉज हेयर कॉम्पनसेटेड फॉर दिस and both are now at one level this is carbon trading now look at this what is happening carbon credits are being generated either you are giving under a limit or let's say you are using renewable energy okay aapne bola ki maine utni hi energy yani utna let's say maine 
टेन गीगावाट पावर प्रोड्यूस किया जो मैं अगर एक कोल प्लांट से करता तो एक्स अमाउंट ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड रिलीज होता बट मैंने वो सोलर से किया है तो दैट मीन्स आई हैव प्रिवेंटेड एक्स अमाउंट ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड फ्रॉम गोइंग इन टू द एटमोसफेयर बिकॉज आई यूज सोलर प्लांट्स सो आई हैव अर्न अ सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ कार्बन क्रेडिट सो देर आर एजेंसीज इन द वर्ल्ड विच सेंड पीपल जो जाके असेसमेंट करते हैं कि ओके दिस इज द अमाउंट ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड यू हैव प्रिवेंटेड फ्रॉम गोइंग इन टू द एटमोसफेयर दीज कार्बन क्रेडिट्स आर इशूड बाई दीज registries to these people and these carbon credits are like certificate ki isne itna bacha liya okay these certificates are traded in the market that is the concept of carbon market is this clear to everybody now let's look at the question samajh aa gaya na theek hai ab question dekhte hain Carbon markets are likely to be one of the most widespread tools in the fight against climate change. Is this correct or not? Yes. Why? Because people are getting motivation and incentive to save carbon. अगर carbon market का concept ही नहीं होता, जैसे हम पहले देख रहे थे, there is no government, there is no carbon market concept. जिसको जितना धुआं उड़ाना है उड़ाओ, right? But now, because of carbon markets, people have an incentive. because they can earn money by trading those certificates so it is giving an incentive it is a tool against climate change to ye statement to pakka correct hai let's come to the second statement carbon markets transfer resources from the private sector to the state what is the state state means government in loosely translated वैसे होता नहीं है but loosely translated state means government now how is it transferring resources from private to the state now understand it this way agar ye prime con carbon credit or market ka concept hi nahi hota agar nahi hota to kiska mandate tha ki global warming nahi honi chahiye carbon emissions kam hone chahiye ye kiska kaam hai government ka it is the responsibility of the state now because you have created a carbon market you have given incentive to people to participate in this that means what was supposed to be done by you afforestation renewable energy cutting emissions is being done by people so what resources were had to be used by the state for those activities are being done by the private sector so काम प्राइवेट सेक्टर कर रहा है बट क्रेडिट इज गोइंग टू द गवर्नमेंट दैट मीन्स लेट्स से प्राइवेट सेक्टर इन इंडिया इज बिल्डिंग रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी प्रोजेक्ट्स बट गवर्नमेंट एट द इंटरनेशनल फोरा कैन गो एंड से वी हैव कट डाउन आर कार्बन एमिशन बाय सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ दैट मीन्स द रिसोर्सेज आर ट्रांसफर्ड फ्रॉम द प्राइवेट सेक्टर टू द स्टेट इज दिस करेक्ट अगर प्राइवेट सेक्टर होता ही नहीं कार्बन मार्केट होती ही नहीं कार्बन मार्केट नहीं होती तो प्राइवेट सेक्टर ये कोई काम नहीं करता दे आर डूइंग इट बिकॉज दे हैव एन इंसेंटिव एंड अगर ये सब प्राइवेट मार्केट uh, ये सब सीन में नहीं होते तो बेचारी गवर्नमेंट को ही हर जगह जा जा के पेड़ उगाने पड़ते या सोलर पावर पैनल्स लगाने पड़ते एंड सो ऑन एंड सो पट सो कार्बन मार्केट्स ट्रांसफर रिसोर्सेज फ्रॉम द प्राइवेट सेक्टर टू द स्टेट नाउ सोर्स ऑफ द क्वेश्चन द इकोनमिस्ट का ये एक आर्टिकल है ओके कार्बन मार्केट्स आर ग्लोइंग गोइंग ग्लोबल जस्ट सी दिस लाइन लाइक टैक्सेस लाइक टैक्सेस यानी कि जैसे टैक्सेस करते हैं कार्बन मार्केट्स ट्रांसफर रिसोर्सेज फ्रॉम द प्राइवेट सेक्टर टू द स्टेट लाइक टैक्सेस हाउ टैक्सेस ट्रांसफर रिसोर्सेज जब गवर्नमेंट हमें टैक्स करती है वो हमारा पैसा अपने पास ले जाती है कि नहीं so resources are transferring from the private sector to the state from your personal income or income taxes deducted aapka paisa government ko ja raha hai na same cheez carbon market mein hui ki nahi carbon markets are incentivizing people to invest in these technologies and what should have been done by the government is being done by private people that means government ka kaam ho raha hai at the cost of private expense so that statement is also correct and which is why it is a good tool that is why it is a effective tool 
in the fight against climate change because private resources are pitching in and therefore statement 2 is the correct answer of statement 1 having said that this is a इतनी बड़ी कहानी के बाद आई विल स्टिल से दैट दिस इज सब्जेक्ट टू द आंसर की ऑफ यू पी एस सी बिकॉज वी डोंट हैव एन ऑफिशियल आंसर की दिस इज आवर करंट अंडरस्टैंडिंग इन ऑल लाइकलीहुड दिस इज करेक्ट बिकॉज लॉजिकली दिस इज वॉट सीम्स टू बी करेक्ट ठीक है नेक्स्ट ईयर जब आंसर कीज आएंगी देन वील अगेन हैव अ सेशन एंड देन वील रेक्टिफाई इफ एनी चेंजेस नीड टू बी डन एज ऑफ नाउ कॉन्सेप्चुअली यू हैव अंडरस्टूड कार्बन मार्केट्स ऑल राइट गुड चलो नेक्स्ट Yeah, and this was the article in uh, Hindu again. Explained what are carbon markets, how do they operate? जब ऐसा कोई article आता है ना बहुत detailed वाला जिसमें explained में सब कुछ लिखा होता है please read it, please read it. ऐसे नहीं छोड़ना है उसको All right, done? चल Industry based questions. Just read these questions, please. Okay, steel slag is a material. Can be used for which of the following? Steel slag is a byproduct of the steel industry. Okay, so yes, it can be. Again, the question is based on recycling of materials. That is why it is classified under environment. Construction of base road. Improvement of agricultural soil and production of cement all are correct. Question, thoda sa difficult tha for that time, but it gave an idea that everybody has to understand steel slag, copper slag, jo bhi industry related items hai which are being reused because fly ash had already been asked. Fly ash had already been asked, so this was a logical corollary. So answer is correct, and this is what it looks like. Okay, now. ये रहा कॉपर स्मेल्टिंग प्लांट्स ओके सो दे मे रिलीज लीथल अमाउंट्स नाउ स्पेसिफिक इंडस्ट्रीज आई टोल्ड यू पोल्यूशन बेस्ड क्वेश्चन आर इधर सोर्स और इम्पैक्ट और पर्टिकुलर लॉज गवर्निंग दैम ओके सो दीज आर द क्वेश्चन विच आर डीलिंग विद सोर्सेज ऑफ पोल्यूशन सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इट रिलीज इज मोनोऑक्साइड इट कैन कॉज हैवी लीचिंग इन सम ऑफ हैवी मेटल्स इन द एनवायरमेंट एंड इट रिलीज इज सनफर डाइऑक्साइड एज अ pollutant all are correct theek okay? hai under pollution you will be reading these topics you will be taught in your respective classes and these topics will be dealt with okay let's see some international initiatives again uh, topic based bhi aa sakte hain so for example agriculture mein agriculture related pucha tha okay but otherwise also so again most of the important things i am telling you जो पूछ रहे हैं दो आर दंस विच आर लेसर नोन्स ओके नॉट द मेजर वंस सो क्लाइमेट एक्शन ट्रैकर इज वॉट इट इज अ डेटा बेस क्रिएटेड बाई अ कोलेशन ऑफ रिसर्च ऑर्गेनाइजेशन क्लाइमेट एक्शन ट्रैकर अगेन वॉज नॉट अ वेरी फेमस दिस थिंग ये भी ढूंढ के निकालना पड़ा था बेसिकली इट इज अट इज अ डेटा बेस विच इज ट्रैकिंग दैट हाउ मच एमिशन आर एक्चुअली बींग कट डाउन बाई कंट्रीज okay so it is a it is a tracker of the climate action that countries are taking r2 code of practices again a very offbeat theme not heard by anyone r2 code of practices talks about environmentally responsible practices in electronics recycling industries again kisi ko nahi aata tha ye question it was a tough question for those times again uh, the point being it is given by a particular body which certifies certain products that recycling is being done in a sustainable manner or something like that that is why it is talking about recycling of electronics so e waste se related tha not many people knew the answer but after this again this particular organization becomes important which releases the r2 code of practices okay just find out which one it is is some some kind of a ngo in us based hai koi theek hai all right so again it was it is dealing that if a, a particular they issue certificates so if you receive a certificate that you are adhering to this code of practice that means you are recycling in a sustainable manner all right ha source nahi hai sorry yaar i told you i told you at the start of the session 
there is no one uh, final source i'll tell you upsc asks aise ajeeb ajeeb se naam they'll ask in one article kahi aaya hoga na to read news papers and keep jotting them down i'll show you further examples ye to easy hai traffic ye to padhte hain sab theek hai traffic is a bureau under unep no it's not okay it's not and the mission is to ensure that trade of plants and animals is not a threat to the conservation of nature answer is two only theek hai traffic to aap logon ko padhaya hi jayega simple hai okay again i told you climate and clean air coalition ye bhi nahi kisi ko aata tha jis saal aaya 2018 ka question hai again the uh, you know the name of this was somewhere mentioned in an article like this world health organization study lists four key climate pollutants so it is likely that someone who is reading this article will focus on the name of the pollutants but not on this particular body which was mentioned in this article okay that's why i am telling you jo bhi chote chote naam bhi aate hai na just note it down uh, but the point to notice that the questions being asked on them are very broad so for example r2 pe the question was very broad ramsar hai एग्रीकल्चरल क्रॉप्स है ई वेस्ट है इफ ओनली यू न्यू ई वेस्ट से रिलेटेड है यू कुड हैव आंसर द क्वेश्चन आर वेरी ब्रॉड सी दीज आर वेरी ब्रॉड ओके ऑप्शन आर ब्रॉड सो सी सी ए सी इज टू रिड्यूस शॉर्ट लिफ्ट क्लाइमेट पोल्यूटेंट इज अक इनिशियटिव ऑफ जी ट्वेंटी नो तो ये तो अगर किसी ने जी ट्वेंटी पढ़ा है एंड यू हैव नॉट रेड दिस देर इज अ गुड लाइवलीहुड दैट दिस इज अ ट्रैप सो दिस इज नॉट करेक्ट एंड दिस फोकस इज ऑन मिथेन ब्लैक कार्बन एंड हाइड्रोफ्यूरो कार्बन ओके आई एम टेलिंग यू रिपीटेडली स्मॉल बॉडीज और देयर नेम्स आर ऑल्सो इम्पॉर्टेंट दिस इज दिस ईयर्स क्वेश्चन ओके सॉरी फॉर द प्रिंट इन्वेजिव स्पीशीज स्पेशलिस्ट ग्रुप दैट डेवलप्स द ग्लोबल इन्वेजिव स्पीशीज डेटा बेस belongs to which of the following organization that means ye jo group hai which builds the global invasive species database that means kon kon si species in the world are invasive species wo group comes under which body now the answer to this question is iucn okay the answer is iucn but what we have to see is this the quest this particular database was covered in these newspaper articles okay these newspaper articles now why was this because there is a certain a uh, seaweed this is the name of the cd seaweed capophycus okay this capophycus is a additive which is used is used in the food industry so for ex example it is put in frozen deserts chocolates cheese whipped cream okay all yummy things so it is put as a food additive in food products and pepsico pepsi sabko pata hai pepsico company pepsico was uh, extensively farming this seaweed you know in the shores of tamil nadu around the shores of, it's a seaweed to pani mein hi farming hogi okay so it was extensively farming this seaweed in tamil nadu and it is a invasive species so what you see here is a coral reef around which this particular seaweed is capturing the co coral reef right it is destroying the coral reef ye yellow yellow seaweed hai and what you see these tentacles are the coral reef corals okay <coughs> so what happened because of this look tamil nadu coral reefs in choke hold of exotic seaweed how a scientific debate and mystery disease stalled seaweed farming in parts of tamil nadu mystery disease bol raha but anyway pot, bottom line is in these articles the name of this database was mentioned that this particular seaweed capophycus is a part of the global invasive species database and under that was iucn and that is what upsc asked understood That's why I am saying organizations जिनके नाम आ रहे हैं they are the lesser known ones, okay? But obviously I we don't expect you to answer all of them. But the strategy is that if in articles you get to know, and suppose if a database 
like IUCN is responsible for red data book, okay, endangered species of plants and animals वो करता है, तो अगर एक invasive species का भी data बनाता है IUCN, it automatically becomes important, alright, and that is how this was in news and this question was asked, okay. Again, if you see the date, third October 2022, twentieth October 2022, and the question was in 2023, right? Chalo, pollution. This question on bio remediation. Everybody understands bio remediation. That means you are using bio biology basically biology microbes and microorganisms or other organisms to reduce the pollution so it is asking that it is a technique for cleaning up pollution by enhancing the same biodegradation process that occurs in nature so naturally nature may decomposes break down the pollutants to usi process ko humne further enhance kar diya taaki jaldi jaldi break down ho that is bio remediation all right any contaminant with heavy metals such as cadmium and lead can be readily and completely treated by bioremediation. <laughs> well, language se hi pata chal ki it is not possible. Heavy metals can be done readily and steadily. <laughs> you know that, that readily and completely is telling you there is a trap here. Okay. Genetic engineering can be used to create microorganisms specifically designed for bioremediation. Yes, of course, why not? Right? Okay. This question on pollution is comparing National Green Tribunal with CPCB, that is the Central Pollution Control Board. So uh, questions, pollution say, sources, impact, the basics of pollution and your laws and acts. Okay. Alright, NGTB has been established by an act whereas CPCB has been created by an executive order. Is this correct? No, NGT and CPCB both are created by act. NGT ka to apna act hai ye. CPCB was created under the Water Prevention of Pollution Act 1974. Okay, CPCB has been created under that. So first statement is not correct. NGT provides environmental justice and helps to reduce the burden of litigation in higher courts while CPCB promotes cleanliness of streams, wells and aims to improve the quality of air in country. CPCB ka mandate kya hai? It basically keeps a check on industries. Okay, it has the power. So CPCB ka mandate likh lo. You should, you should know that what is the mandate of CPCB? What are the powers of CPCB? How are the powers of Central Pollution Control Board different from that of State Pollution Control Board? There are two levels. Okay, Central Pollution Control Board and State Pollution Control Board. Okay. Ye bhi easy question hai. Which one of the following are terms pyrolysis and plasma gasification? They are mentioned in the context of waste to energy. This is very easy, basic question. This will be taught to you in the classes. Now, which of the above are released into the atmosphere due to burning of crop or biomass residue? So, agar aap crops burn kar rahe ho, to kya kya hoga? All are correct. The only thing people baki to sabne soch liya tha, thoda sa ozone mein sabko doubt hua tha. Okay? And ozone free option hi nahi hai. So great. But, but like everybody knows, elimination te technique has been eliminated. So ab question aega only one, only two, all three, all four. Only three, all four. Ya none. Thik hai? To fir then it becomes difficult. Alright? Okay. They go similar question. Why is there a great concern about microbeads? Microbeads are very often seen in the news. Very often seen in the news. What are microbeads? They are small particles of plastics which are all pervasive in the environment, especially aquatic ecosystems, which are less than 5 millimeter of size. Very small spot. So they can just go anywhere. Okay. So they are considered harmful to marine ecosystems. They are also found in things like cosmetics. Okay. Okay. So you know, some of the countries in the world 
have banned uh, what is it called? Sorry, char gels. Ah, something like that. No, not char gel. I'm looking for something else. Ah, uh, ये sunblocks होते हैं ना? What is it called? Sunblocks which you put uh, sunscreens. I was looking for this word. Sorry. <laughs> so some countries uh, find out which country in the world has blocked sunscreens because they people put apply a lot of sunscreen and then they enter into the water to play and then that is causing a lot of problem to the marine life find out which country sorry <laughs> okay all right excess of which of the above in the environment is or are causes of acid rain so acid rain is oxides of sulfur and nitrogen all right okay now who air quality guidelines again this question was asked in 2022 and preceding year mein there were hardly one or two articles on this hardly one or two articles the main key thing is that this was asked in prelims 2022 but in mains 2021 upsc asked this question just usse ek cycle pehle ke mains mein upsc asked describe the key points of the revised global air quality guidelines recently released by the who how are they different from its last update in 2005 what changes can india's national clean air program how can this achieve these revised standards and standards clearly bataya hai and this is exactly what the question was asking ki standard kya hai that means 24 hour mean of 2.5 should not exceed this highest level of ozone occur during periods of inclement weather what is inclement weather what is inclement weather sunny okay find out anyway pm10 can penetrate the lung barrier and enter the blood stream excessive ozone in the air can trigger asthma okay so this particular theme was just asked in the previous mains who but article sirf ek do hi the news mein who global air quality guidelines okay note this down this theme is also important <coughs> now in the making of how many of the above are used for in the making of how many of the above are hydrofluorocarbons used so hydrofluorocarbons are a component of what all aerosols for foam agents fire retardants lubricants kisi ko nahi aata tha it's a tough question because you either know it or you don't know it the key takeaway is hydrofluorocarbons se related there is a full infographic given on the websites of uh, montreal protocol and all okay so if you have just seen this infographic okay you will see ki hydrofluorocarbons kahan kahan hai मोबाइल एयर कंडीशनिंग में 24 परसेंट फोम एजेंट 11 परसेंट एयर कंडीशनिंग एरोजोल्स 5 परसेंट फायर एक्सटिंग्विशर 5 परसेंट ऑल आर देयर इन दैट क्वेश्चन ओके सो की थिंग इज वेन एवर यू कम अक्रॉस एन इन्फोग्राफिक विच डिटेल्स बहुत सारी चीज़ों को कैप्चर करके मैंशन करता है जस्ट सेव इट समवेयर ओके सो दैट यू कैन लुक एट इट लेटर ऑन ऑल राइट ओके protected areas now let's come to some normal environment questions okay related to biodiversity we have done this is related to protected areas so one thing that i always tell my students for protected areas is the best source where you want to revise all of them dekho pure india ke ek sath to padhna mushkil hai so you go to the state websites especially tourism websites of particular states they will put their best foot forward because they want to attract tourists so for example this is the tourism website of madhya pradesh to so, dekho dazzling panna enchanting reva delightful kanha of course wo thoda sa adjective zyada hai but all the names of the important wildlife sanctuaries or national parks will be mentioned here if you click on each of those you will get to see what are the proper features so let's say what are the special species that is available here which is not somewhere else 
okay or if there is any other characteristic of that particular place so for example royal bandhavgarh okay so abhi i don't know whether this is true or not just verify this but when this was taken this screenshot it says that india's top dwelling for tigers it has the highest density of royal bengal tigers in the world and all the white tigers of the world trace their roots to bandhavgarh national park this is written on their website okay so what i'm trying to tell you is that ye jo states ki sites hoti hai na you get some specific information related to that which you will not find in any other content not even your books your so called coaching books okay theek <laughs> hai so like i told you the states put their best foot forward and that's why it's important to go through these koi na koi unique characteristic aapko zarur milega usse related all right and please use maps extensively extensively you cannot remember protected areas without having maps so have a practice ki this is what madhya pradesh looks like this is kanha this is penj this is where panna is to isme char panch type ke questions solve ho jayenge ek ki which of these for example uh, is located in madhya pradesh you will be able to answer arrange the following in north to south you will be able to answer what is the natural habitat of xyz animal you will be able to answer because you know this name is let's say is in madhya pradesh aur wahan pe is type ka animal ho nahi sakta that you will be able to answer so mapping helps you tackle the base of the foundation of the preparation and you need not wait for someone to give it to you in text and maps are always easier to remember always aapko exam mein ye picture dimag mein aa jayegi ye upar panna tha yahan penche hai yahan kana hai to kuch bhi question aayega na you can apply your logic and solve it okay clear okay things that are have been in news or currently in news news based question so for example which of the following statements best describes the term social cost of carbon that means it is the long term damage done by a ton of carbon emissions in a given year ye term news mein aayi hai frequently and that is why there was a question if you see this question which one of the following best describes the term ग्रीन वॉशिंग ये तो अब भी बहुत न्यूज में आता है वॉट इज ग्रीन वॉशिंग क्रिएटिंग अ फॉल्स इंप्रेशन दैट अ कंपनीज प्रोडक्ट्स आर इको फ्रेंडली एंड एनवायरमेंटली साउंड एग्जाम्पल मैकडोनल्ड्स पता है सबको मैकडोनल्ड्स में जो स्ट्रॉज मैकडोनल्ड्स वॉज यूजिंग दे वर मेड अप ऑफ प्लास्टिक ओके सो मैकडोनल्ड सेट ओके we will become a very environment friendly uh, company and we will replace plastic with paper straws okay so now it is projecting itself as a very environmentally friendly we have removed plastic and we are using paper but the paper that you are using is not recycled paper they are cutting fresh trees fresh pulp and making that into paper is it environmentally friendly that is green washing आप काम तो कर रहे हो लेकिन आप उतना इन्वायरमेंटली फ्रेंडली नहीं कर रहे हो सो दे आर नॉट रियली हेल्पिंग द कॉज ऑफ कोर्स इट इज वन लेवल बेटर दैन हैविंग प्लास्टिक स्ट्रॉज बट यू के नॉट क्लेम टू बी एक्सट्रीमली इन्वायरमेंटली फ्रेंडली दैट दिस प्रोडक्ट इज टोटली इन्वायरमेंटली फ्रेंडली एंड साउंड इफ दैट इज द केस वाई डोंट यू इन्वेस्ट इन रिसाइकल पेपर फॉर योर स्ट्रॉज रिसाइकल पेपर यूज करो दैट इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ ग्रीन वॉशिंग ओके वेयर कंपनीज प्रोजेक्ट दैट दे आर doing something environmentally friendly but actually on the ground it is not it is still causing harm okay <coughs> again recently based question tha in news there was a proposal to translocate some of the lions from their natural habitat in gujarat to which one of the following bahut supreme court mein case bhi chala tha iske liye madhya pradesh was fighting yaar lions de nahi rahe gujarat wale de nahi rahe gujarat wale ne bola hum nahi denge gujarat wale the, they kept on saying that something is wrong this is not right the you know the ecosystem of this particular park is not suited they just didn't want to give the lions 
they i mean there were proper committees were set up for this and proper committees told that this is probably not perfect conditions for the lions okay hint they were given some other animal as a consolatory prize kuno to kuno mein abhi kaun sa consolation prize aaya hai cheetah theek hai so now cheetahs have been relocated there answer is kuno all right all right thank you very much and no need to clap <laughs> thank you no need to clap the only thing is keep these topics in mind keep these guidelines in mind and prepare very hard thank you